I've been on the scene, bro, from, from young, bro. I was able to walk with top guys at young age, 16 years old, with Pernay, with the Motown millionaire, top pound for pound best fighter in the world. Boxing high level. I was traveling the world with Mike Tyson. You know what I'm saying? 18, 19 years old, bro. You know what I'm saying? 20 years old. We going to different countries and I'm we pulling up in a country in the jet and I'm looking out the window going, yo, did the whole country come to the airport? Like it looked like half of the country came to greet us at the airport. What's up, world? It's your boy Big Court on the Holding Court Podcast. What's going on with your producer Ken? Hey. It's always a blessing when we get, we do a lot of rap. We do. We do a lot of rap. Every now and then we get an athlete or a special talent. So That's it's, right. it's a blessing to yeah. kind of like broaden the horizon That's and get right, someone right. new. So we got. I think technically we've had three three athletes, basketball Matt players. Matt Barnes was on here. Yeah. Rashad uh, yeah. McCants. Uh, Coutinho. Coutinho. Yeah. yeah. But right. anyway, legend. We got a legend <laughs> got in the building. We got a legend. I'll let you. I mean, faster. You even wore your Rocky Balboa today. You see that? I, you, you sleep <laughs> on this. Did you, did you notice this? Mm-mm. You did? Okay, I'm going I'm to I'm lace you. But, man, we got uh, the welterweight champion, uh, world champion, lightning speed, lightning fast, known for his, was it South, Southpaw stands? Southpaw. Yeah. Southpaw, representing BK Brooklyn, man. Zab Judah. What's good, fam? What's up, man? How you good? Feeling? I appreciate yeah. you coming, brother. Appreciate you for having me. Yeah, man. I done had, I've, been, I've been wanting to get you on here for a cool minute. Mm-hmm. For for a good minute, haven't I? I've been yeah, mentioning yeah, him no, for a minute. It, yeah. Well, big shout out to Uncle Phil. Yeah, Uncle shout Phil out made to this Uncle happen. Phil. You know what absolutely. What yeah, absolutely. Exactly that. Yeah. Um, yes, so so hold on. So you you don't recognize the you don't recognize the fit. Nah, you tell a me boxer, about it. Boxer, bro, you a champion. I know I'm a boxer, but you a champion. So so where you, you don't re- remember where this came from? I wore this because you was the boxer. I know. I'm trying. Okay. Uh, tell me, Rocky. With the I Russian. wasn't really a big fan of the Rocky movies. Come on, bro. Hold on. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. So wait, hey, man. That's that's his. <laughs> I'm a real fighter. Yeah. So when, so when you're a real fighter. Yeah. And you watch somebody half get killed in the ring and then come back. Like, that's not real. <laughs> it's not real. You know, Ruffy would have been. But but hold on. The concept of Rocky wasn't really about the boxing. It was about the fight and the man. It was about the spirit. You I know what I mean? That, the warrior spirit. As a fighter. Yeah. As a pugilist. Okay. Top pugilist that is going through the steps and the motions. We looking at the fighting aspect. Okay. The fighting aspect was like. So you couldn't get really, into it. You that's couldn't it. respect we it. Cut it off right. No disrespect to, to the movie. I understand I, what you know, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Cool with it. You know, it's, 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 but it wasn't. I wasn't like a fan. Like I'm. But you in. never watched. You didn't watch the Rocky where Apollo got killed by uh, Drago. Yes, seen that. Okay, so yeah, this the same outfit that he was wearing when when when. Okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. No, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, I apologize. I apologize. That's all right. I, that. I was trying to be on my box. Yeah, yeah, I missed that. I missed that. I'm, sorry. I'm not a I'm not a crazy fan, so I'm more on this side of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, uh. yeah, he's looking like I don't know what that yeah, is. Yeah, I'm like, the Rocky Jones is good, cool, but you know what? Wait, how about the how about the recent Creed ones though? Do you watch those? You like those or not? It's the same. Because of that, I never got into oh, being okay. like, you know. Because it's more contemporary. I mean, I like more... Michael B. Jordan and all of yeah, them and yeah, you know, yeah. um the rest of the cast and stuff that was in it. Mm-hmm. Is there a boxing film? I don't know why we're talking about film, but mm-hmm. okay, we're already here. Is there a boxing film that you've seen that you that you actually like? Yeah, that, that was dope. Or a fighting film at all? Fighting film. Um, or is that all just, that's just cinema? Yeah, most of the cinema stuff is like, when you really do this, yeah. and you know, bing, bing, bop, fight's over, and he comes back and falls yeah. over and stumbles <laughs> over to the thing and grabs this. No, yeah. it's not that. It's, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That's not real to me. You know what I'm so saying? So not even like the undisputed. You know what I mean? Like where you got the mixed martial arts or nothing. So you just combat. You just like, uh, hand in hand. I, mean, I know what that really is. So Television fighting is different from real it fighting. It is, very much that, so. That, that's all I would say to that. I want, you know, no disrespect to that's the right. show. No, Nobody you're, you're correct. The television fighting uh-huh. and real aspect pugilist fighting is to- mm-hmm. totally different thing. What is that? What pugilist fighting? I never heard that. What? Yeah, yeah a pugilist is a fighter. Okay. Another word for I'm, fighter. I've never heard fighter. that word. I learned. Yeah. You know, oh, it. I'm the lo- word he guy. Lo- he loves you. Yeah. 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 He loves yeah. yeah. new words. Yeah. Nah, that's why I asked. I like <laughs> new words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's pugilist. Top. I never heard yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's boxing is ancient though. Boxing goes back to Greece, right? Yeah, it goes back maybe further than that, bro. Yeah, yeah. I think it's 
before Christ. Adam mm. and Eve. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, but that's Mitch and Dapple. Yeah, they go back. They go fighters because yeah. they won. But I think fight, fighting is innate. I mean, I think that's just human nature to yeah, it's fight. Human nature. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. 100%, 100%. So you grew up in Brooklyn. Brownsville. BK. Huh? Brownsville. Brownsville. Yeah, so see, like when you get real New Yorkers, yeah. you in New York, then they start to, like New York is a very, they, they separation, they, they like segregated. So it's like when you start talking that, where you from in New York, you know? And you, uh-huh. Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. No, I'm, I'm from Brownsville, Brooklyn. Brownsville. You know what I'm saying? You got Red Hook. You got yeah, you got Best Star. You got, you know, Biggie from Best Star. Yeah. Always big, you never heard Biggie say Brownsville. You never right. heard Biggie say no other. You heard Best Star Brooklyn. You know got what I'm saying? You. Yeah. Right. No, I can dig it. I can dig uh, it because you know what I'm finna say. Oh, yeah. Me, me being from, I'm from Kansas City, Missouri originally. Mm-hmm. I've been here 20 years. Nice. But one thing that we hate is when I say I'm from Kansas City and I will emphatically say Missouri for they a say reason. They say St. Louis. I know no, it. they'll say Kansas. They'll come back oh. and say, oh, you're from Kansas. Kansas City, Kansas is a whole nother state and city. Mm, you know what I mean? Gotcha. So us from KCMO, we we get burnt up. We, you know what I'm saying? We mm. like, no, specific. I said Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah. No shade to KCK, because that's fam. Right. But, it's a little right. bit, but, but okay. it's different. <laughs> <Is> it? <laughs> but it's right. different, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. What, what was it like growing up up there? In uh, in Brooklyn. Oh man, um, Brownsville. I'm trying to sum it up in one word. It was just, it was an experience. Now that I'm older, I could look back and say, it was an experiment and it was an experience because you know, my story is, I grew up in the projects, but I always had this vision that this can't be. The end of life, no way. Mm-hmm. I'd come outside every day. I was looking around like, nah, this this can't be, this mm-hmm. can't be that what God, the great God that we know, but this is just gonna leave us. This no, no, it can't be. So as a kid, you understood your condition. Hundred percent. Oh wow. Hundred percent. Huh. Hundred percent. How how did you? I didn't. I didn't understand it. The aspect. A hundred percent, totally, mm-hmm. because I never like. I didn't understand it until I started traveling, and That's and, what, and, yeah. and because I was a young. Fighter, you know, a young mm-hmm. fighter, and I was good. I was mm-hmm. able to travel. I was able to go to different tournaments and different states and stuff like that. So, so when I got to other states and other places, I seen p- other kids. They was doing different stuff than we was doing. It wasn't looking like we was looking, and they mm-hmm. wasn't like they was talking different and living, dressing different. And I'm like, what the hell is that? Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, you know, these are going to stay, and they're like, yeah, well, I'm gonna run home right quick. And you like, you see in their house, you like. Got a front yard, backyard. Like, right. Like, like, wait a minute. I, yeah. I'm a, I live in a building, yo, yeah. you know, on 12th floor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's different. So that's when you start to look back like, nah, this can't be real. You know, and I, and as a young, a young, a young fighter, I was able to travel with uh I, I went to Virginia Beach mm-hmm. to go with Pernell Whitaker, Pernell uh-huh. Sweepy Whitaker. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Um, after winning the Golden Gloves. Mm-hmm. When I was down there with Whitaker, I was, you know, he was Pernell Whitaker. He was yeah. the top, top. Pound for pound, slickest thing moving. And he was rich, he was a millionaire. He had a big mansion mm-hmm. and tons of cars. And I'm like, yo, this is, I and want you were this. how old when you saw that? I was, uh, when I go and put it, I was 16. Wow. Okay. 16 years old. Okay. Yeah. And you had been fighting for what, at least 10 years at that point? So I started at my um, amateur career, started from six years old. I had my first fight at six mm-hmm. and uh, 18 years old. And wow. then I, so, and I went to the Olympics and I'm 18. Then as I finished up that, I turned professional at 18 years old. Wow. Yeah. Let me ask you something, because that's, what made you want to be a fighter? Like, you know, like, I want to do, I want to be okay with getting punched on. I want to be okay. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, even as a kid, most kids are afraid of getting hit. What made you not be afraid of that and want to pursue that? It's probably going to sound crazy, though, but mm. it was like an escape. It In was an way? escape from everything that, we, that was going on with us. Everything we were set in. Everybody that I seen that was successful was fighters. Pernell Whitaker, Mike Tyson, you know, my father. My father was a fighter. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So I seen that this was, you know, from where I was at, I was like, wait a minute. This is these guys, they got it. I see Mike used to come to the hood. I was young. I met Mike, I met Mike at eight years old. My mm-hmm. father was a champ of the world. So him and Mike had a connection. And one morning he woke us up, like like four, three, three, four in the morning. And Mike was standing in our kitchen. We mm-hmm. was like, Oh, Mike Tyson, uh. yeah. And I used to stutter like really, really bad. Mm-hmm. And, and I said, Yo, ah, I could be champion of the world, I'll be champion of the world. Like, he was like, You know, all right, yeah. just keep working hard. <laughs> and one day it'll happen. 
Yeah. Sure enough, I done opened up for Mike Tyson seven different times around around the world. The biggest fights of them all. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like a, a major aspect. I mean, that's a another whole story. That's another whole story. I'm just you, I'm just you, jumping up. Fast. Yeah, you grew up with your mom and your dad. Yeah, I grew up with my mother. Yeah. Okay. Well, I grew up living in a house with my mother, mm -hmm. and my dad was my dad was a hands on dad. Okay. My dad was a hands on dad. He you, would always come every weekend and get us, and, you know, get me and take me over there, and you know, take me to the gym. And that's how I was able to, you know, compete in the tournaments and things like that. Did your mother, did, was she okay with you fighting? My mother and my father met in karate school. My mother's a black belt in karate. Oh. And my father's a ninth degree black belt. Wow. And showed the kind of jiu-jitsu, so. Okay, so you yeah. ain't really have a choice. Yeah, I didn't really, really have a choice. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> yeah. DNA. Yeah, it's yeah, in your it DNA. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. okay. That answer, that says a lot. That answers yeah. all the questions there then. So did you did you actually, I'm assuming, you enjoyed it even from six years old? I loved it. Yeah, I did, loved it. Did I, you know even then that it would it could potentially take you no, where you went? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I never had a a vision or aspect of where I'm at now. No, never had that. Wow. I just knew it was better out there mm -hmm. than where we was at. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like me in that area where we was at. You know, my thing was mm -hmm. probably move to Queens. Get a home yeah. for moms and all that. Like, yeah. you know, but I never thought living in California. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Live all around the world, travel the world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Six time champ of the world. I never seen that. I never seen all that. You said your dad was a champ, yeah. but you guys was in Brownsville. Was the was the pay not there my back father, then? My father my father wasn't he wasn't, you know, my mother and father was separated. Oh, I got you. Mother and father was separated. So gotcha. my father, he was a kickboxer. Yeah. He, he took kickboxing back in the eighties to the height of the height. He was a uh, three-time kickboxing world champion, but it wasn't really no money. Like it wasn't mm -hmm. really popular or big like that. You know, gotcha. he made he made decent stuff to main to main to maintain. But even though he wasn't a father that was in the house with me, he was always there for us. Always. Yeah. Did Pop you up. did you get into a lot of fights growing oh, up? Oh, a school? lot, a lot. Why? What well, did you have a temper, or is it just because no, you just, in the hood and that's just it's what just it is. you know what it is. Coming home from tournaments, I would come home with trophies bigger than me. Mm -hmm. And the, you know the hood, they they see you going like that. And then you go upstairs, you come back downstairs. They like, yo, what's that? You like my trophy? I just want to. They like, you can't fight. Yeah. They you like what? Like pop, <laughs> take off. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I was always, I was little, still, still right. am little for my size, for everybody like that. And so I was, I always knew I'm too little for somebody to hit me first. Right. So I'm taking off. So yeah. I was, I was that guy. You know, I got ten, ten brothers. Yeah. And I'm like, all right. Word, you don't, you don't believe that? <laughs> right? And, you know, I was always fast. Yeah. Always fast. Yeah. So I, I just I just take off on them. You know what yeah. I mean? And so it's safe to say that you never had to deal with bullies. No, I didn't I never liked the bullies. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Like, so I was the kid, because I'm the littlest out of all my mm -hmm. brothers. Mm -hmm. I was the one, my brothers would tell you, Zab will Zab will fight a bully. If you see somebody messing with somebody and picking on them, he gonna fight that kid. That was me too. I'm I I I I, yeah. I, I I despise. I despise. Bullies. Bullies I don't too, like bro. that. I don't like to I see people yeah. picking on somebody that's that 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 has a less fortunate or or or, or just who just don't want to fight or, or just or smaller than you. Yeah. You know, most of the time, I see other smaller guys want to fight back, but they can't. They mm -hmm. don't have the the skill aspect. Mm -hmm. They don't have the heart. Right. They don't have the. You know what I'm saying? They, they don't have it. They don't. They just don't have it. They don't mm -hmm. have the. Me, I had ten brothers, so I had resources. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like people always knew. <laughs> you fight one of them, it's like a they 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 like roaches in the house. Yeah. They coming out. I, I never <laughs> heard it put like that. He yeah. Said I had resources. Yeah, I had resources. <laughs> yeah, I had resources. I had. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had go tos. You know what you I'm gotta saying? You got to fight nine yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. Word. That's right. That's it's not gonna. Me. It's not gonna stop here. That's you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he said I had resources. Yeah, I like that. Most definitely. I like that. So. Were you good in school? Like, were you were you studious? Um, in yeah, school I was. Or? I was. I was. Um, I wasn't. I wasn't no um, angel in school. No, mm -hmm. I was. So my problem. I, I was a very intelligent guy. A mm -hmm. Very intelligent guy. I was like, you know, math was one of my favorite subjects. Mm -hmm. But I was more into. I was more into the, just the, the mojo of the fighting aspect of mm -hmm. it. I don't know if that makes sense to yeah, you. Yeah, like, no, so you like, just I was, basically lived and breathed fighting. That's it, all yeah. day, every day. Like, wow. people that went to school with me, cause they, they watch this interview, they could tell you, like, he ain't lying. Yeah. Like, I would come to school, like, with my hand weights. Yeah. And, like, in high school, I had hand weights, because, you know, I was always fast. So, uh -huh. I, that's, that's how I would keep my speed up. I would wear hand weights. Wow. And I would wear them all day. I would go to school with them on. 
Mm-hmm. Like, I never had a shame about that. I would wear sweatsuits all the time. Like, I was mm-hmm. like, I'm a fighter. I, mm-hmm. This is what I want to do. You know what I mean? So, so, at that age, you know, and you're still maturing, mm-hmm. and and though your athleticism and your fighting ability is growing, but, you know, you being a young man, how were you able to um, contain that energy and not just be fighting all over the place and just so direct I, it in the ring? So, I, so I tell you, my, my amateur record was 115 wins and five losses. Mm, wow. I was... Flawless. I was like, I was that kid yeah. growing up. I was that, I was you know that yeah. kid growing up in New York City. Like I like I always have you. If we was the Jacksons, I was yeah. Michael. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like like I was, I really ran it up crazy. Like and, and all my brothers fight. All of them. Yeah. We all started at the same time. All learned the same aspect. I just had a different vision. I just mm-hmm. I seen and wanted something more. And if it makes sense, I didn't know what I want. Yeah. I just knew that I wanted, wanted something more, more than yeah. what we had. That's you know right. what I'm saying? That's and right. I knew that this fighting aspect is, is a possibility I could get out of here with this. Mm-hmm. I seen Tyson. I seen Whitaker. Yeah. I seen these guys. You know what I'm saying? I idolized, before I even met them, I idolized them. You know, they were my, they were my favorite. Mike Tyson, Pernell Whitaker, mm-hmm. Marvelous Marvin Hagler, and Sugar Ray Robinson. Yeah. Those, those, those are my... I was those just going to ask you that. I was just those are my guys. Like, fighters, yeah. So if you look at each yeah. one of them, I took pieces from each one of them and I created myself. What did you take from Tyson? I'm curious. Um just the the aggressive um the aggressive aspect. Ferociousness. Yeah. The aggressive. Mike always yep. said don't wait. Don't yeah. wait. You know what I'm saying? Don't wait. Mm-hmm. Don't wait. Get off first. Be fast. Yeah. You know did what I'm you saying? borrow any technique from from them? Or just Wait, the concept of no, how they no, Pernell Whitaker, the defense, the slickness, the yeah. the 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 you know the mojo, the Mar- yeah. the, Mar- the Marvin Hagler, just his whole style, how he yeah. just you know what I'm saying, hawk, just walk you down and hawk and just hawk you and just yeah. you know what I'm saying, <laughs> the Ray Robbins, the Ray Robinson footwork and just you know what I'm saying, I don't know, what, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, like I had like like I was I was really doing it, yeah, and I- in certain fights I would, as an amateur going up, I would mimic <sighs> in, in the house like all right, y'all t- today. I'm fighting him. I see his style. I'm gonna be Ray Robinson today. I would tell my brother like, "Yo, yeah. I'm gonna be Ray Robinson." Or him. Oh, yeah, he kind of aggressive. I'm gonna be pertinent. I'm gonna make him miss so much. He gonna look stupid. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I would do that, uh-huh. and then I would just, you know. And then as I started growing and getting bigger, I started putting more of it together and together and together. And then it all just became Zab Super Jitter. Okay. Wow. Right. Wow. Yeah. Tyson to me is my one of my favorite. Fighters, period. One of my favorite, the yeah. most ferocious. Um, he had all the physical skills. Um, I, I my mother. It's funny that you say uh, Hagler because I grew up watching Hagler, Hearns mm-hmm. uh, during that whole '80s. Uh, Larry Holmes, yeah. Um, that whole because it, it was a time I wanted to be a boxer too, mm. you know. But you know, my, what happened? I, I, you see, you see yeah, what yeah, happened? We gotta, we, we gotta get into what what, what happened? happened? What happened? Well, what had happened was, <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, I got I got my my mouth busted, and so my mother she just wasn't having it. She just took me out of it. You know, what did I mean? she take you out of it or you took you out? Because you know, no, Mike, she took- Mike got a, Mike got a favorite saying: everybody mm-hmm. wants to be a fighter until they get hit. Yeah, uh, that might have been part of it. Wait a minute, this is not for. I, I wait think, a minute. I think wait, what wait it was. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. This is not for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, let me tell you what I did. She took me out of it, but what I did was I just transitioned to martial arts. Okay. You know, so gotcha. I went from boxing to Aikido and Kempo. Nice. Yeah. Nice, so yeah. yeah, but she took me out of it. I was took I couldn't really it. fight it. I was too young. Mom was but sweet. I I wasn't too happy about getting hit either though. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I got my busted. I was nothing like, nice about it. It's nothing nice. I was like, uh, you my, mama, you might be right. Let's yeah, go over yeah, here and yeah, do these yeah. katas. Let's go do these katas. Hold my hand, mama. Come on, let's walk with me, mama. Come on. <laughs> After that, he was just <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I was like, hold on, let's do these katas and shit. You Tell my gear is out again, mama. My, my gear. Yeah, that shit my ain't for everybody. And get, my, and get my white butt out. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Gonna... Yeah. That shit ain't for everybody. Yeah. You, know, and you finish your shit and then yeah. you're like, here's your next belt. Yeah. But I used to try to mimic Mike Tyson, though. I, yeah. I tried to mimic everything he did. And, and it's funny that you said that taking pieces um, because um, I used to, James Tony is one of my other favorite fighters that I used mm-hmm. to love watching, especially defensively. Because he was just so smooth on the yeah. defense. I mean, he, he would just make it look roll. so easy. First one with the shoulder roll. With the shoulder roll. Nice. And he Calm. would do that little skip. He, he would, would do that easy. little skip and pull his pants up. What a- and I'd be like, damn. What about his pause? He was so paused. He was yeah. so calm. Yeah. So relaxed. Yep. And just like, yep. boom. He was like, oh my, how did he do that? And I mean, you know even his, his head worked. Like, and then he yeah. would stick his tongue out. He would just get cute yeah. with it and yeah. just wasn't tripping. Yeah. And, and I seen the technique. It was almost like he would hide that right hand. 
and the way he would bend down, it was like you didn't see it coming, you know, with the defense. So yeah. I studied him a lot too. Yeah. But I wasn't, I don't know, that like with Tyson, that's a gift to be to have that size and be mm -hmm. able to move that quick and the that speed fast. Was I think speed the speed was, was phenomenal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The speed. Because you know, if you know anything about fighting, you know speed is power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Mike was able to move faster than any other heavyweight Hell yeah. that was his size or bigger. And accurate too. And accuracy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and then a mix with that aggression. Yeah. Mixed with that Brownsville. Mixed yeah. with it. You know what <laughs> I mean? It was just he turned up. He's like, he was definitely one of my favorites. Um, were you were you afraid before your fights? Were no, you scared? Never. No, never. So you were never scared. So my up, my upbringing, kind of, got me out of fear, out of out of being fearful. Mm -hmm. Being raised in the projects, being raised in Brownsville, seeing people shot, seeing dead bodies, hearing gunshots all the time, mm -hmm. seeing people get stabbed. Like you know, you you witness this going to school. You witness you witness stepping over bodies, like seeing fresh blood. Like like, like I tell people, when you see a person. I mean, I know it's kind of. Barbaric, but no, it's all good. You see a person get shot in the head for the first time. <clears throat> the first thing that comes out of head is blue blood mm -hmm. until the air hits it, and then it then it turns red. Mm -hmm. So I've seen that yeah. as a young kid. Like, you know, my mother. This is a real story. My mama could tell you. Man got shot. They were right in his head in front of him. He fell down. His eyes was wide open. He was looking right, at, looking right, looking right at us. And mm -hmm. and I seen like the little blue, mm -hmm. and then it turned red. And I said, Wow. How did that affect you as a kid seeing that? It just. I don't know. I don't know if it made if it made me aggressive, if it made me heartless, if it made me but it didn't bring fear. Right. It didn't bring fear. So like now when you outside, somebody's talking about, yo, homie got a gun over there. You like, well, what are you gonna do with it? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like most people, you know, that suburb, mm -hmm. he got a gun. Oh my God, run. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it was none of that. It was like, oh worry, he got the gun on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he better not pull it out around here. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like stupid stuff. Like, you know, but we was kids, but this is the this is the energy yeah. that we got growing up. We For seen sure. that, you know what I mean? So it's like mm -hmm. it almost brings like this cold, yeah. cold. Yeah, you shoulder. become a little numb to it. Come yeah. numb to it, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah you it's do. It's like we word, were, yo, <laughs> homie got stomped out in the building and stabbed up. Like, word, damn. Yeah. Yo, where y'all going to the basketball court? All right, no, I'm that's, coming. That's real talk. And I think that 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 empathy that 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 you I think that comes as you get older, because we yeah. were just talking about that. You know, the environments we come from, you know, life is cheap. You know, mm -hmm. we don't really value it like that. No. We don't see the value in it. No. But I, ironically, when we become civilized and we get removed mm. from those mm. environments and we get older, start now to have kids. you start to have kids. And we were just talking about this because I was like, damn, I was like 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I could, like you said, I've seen all of that. I've been mm -hmm. around all of that and it's nothing. Somebody say, oh, so-and-so got shot. You're like, damn, for real? Right. Oh, where y'all about to go? You know? Right, But exactly. now, But now that you're older and you're removed from yeah. it and you're more civilized, like I was telling him, I seen, a, uh, I seen this white kid outside a restaurant and he obviously on some type of drugs, homeless. But for whatever reason, I felt like it almost hurt my feelings because I saw my kids. Mm -hmm. I've been around dope fiends my whole life. Never right. thought about that. Never thought about that. Never, you know, uh -huh. to some, you look kind of look down on them, yeah. like you cluck, like yeah. get the fuck out of my face. But yeah. now you're older, and it's like, damn, you see it differently. You're wiser. You know? yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. So you're wiser. when I, but when I say fear, I don't mean necessarily fear of being hurt, but even fear of losing. Never across. I'll tell you, my mind. amateur record: 115 wins and five losses. What was that first loss like? How did that affect you? Um, so my first loss came first, came early. Oh, okay. You got it out the way. Yeah. It came, yeah. Well, I didn't get it out the way. It just came and I yeah. was just like, I didn't like it. And I was mm -hmm. like, I'm never getting beat again. I'm yeah. never getting beat again. So for my first loss, <clears throat> for my second loss, it probably had to be like, I went like probably 60 fights, mm. 50 fights, 30 fights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. Probably like 30 fights. Okay. When I ran up to like 30 fights straight, like couldn't, couldn't be seen. Can't Man. be touched. Kid Man. gloves, Junior Olympics, all of that, everything, nationals. Yeah. Wow. Nobody's beating me, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I remember, I and I always would go into the ring just remembering the first <laughs> loss. And like I said, you know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't I didn't feel that I lost the fight, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It was a point situation, but okay. like no knockout and like that. Got you. It was a point situation. <clears throat> 
And I, you know, they came down. I think I, I don't, very, you know, mm-hmm. vaguely remember the scoring, but it was like similar, close, like mm-hmm. twenty and twenty-one, like, something like that. And I'm like, nigga, just gonna take it from me? He didn't beat me. He can't yeah. beat me. Like I heard him more time than anything. And I was just like, all right, step it up now. Yeah. So anytime I would get in the ring, I was, I was, I was, I was a mean, a mean little guy. Like people would tell you that from New York City, my sparring, from sparring in the ring, in the gym. Mm-hmm. You could get knocked out with spawn with me. Yeah. No, no, no joke. Like, like I would just, I don't know. And I always, and that came from me just saying, practice what you preach. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna talk this killer stuff, you're gonna, you wanna be this ferocious, you have to practice it. Mm-hmm. So I it started with me in the gym. Mm-hmm. Anytime I ever got in the gym, I I like you know how gym people working on stuff. Nope. Mm-hmm. Not 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 me. Like my father said, he like tell, my father told people, like, all right, you can spar with Zab, but you know, I hope your kid is ready. Yeah, he he's really going. He don't playing for keeps. Yeah, you know some people are like, well, turn him down. He like, I can't, <laughs> I can't. He's yeah. he's he's not gonna. He's programmed. Yeah. Did you ever get hurt sparring? No. Okay. No. Did you ever hurt anybody sparring? Hmm. 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 I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, like I'm telling you, I used to mm-hmm. knock guys out in the gym. Hmm. Yeah. From 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 young all the way going up to professional. When at, at what point? So you turned pro at 18. 18, yeah. 18. What was your first pro fight? Um, uh, September twentieth, nineteen ninety six. <laughs> Who was that? Michael Johnson. Okay. Second round knockout. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> and that right there was like, but leading up to this, I was in the Pernell Whitaker training camp. I was training mm-hmm. with Pernell. Being Pernell, Pernell was like, mm-hmm. he was. That, that was like my uncle. He was with me. I was with him everywhere. I lived with him. I was every day sparring, training, mm-hmm. everything. And I learned so much. I'm 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 in training camp with Toro Gotti, Ivan Robinson, uh, Vernon Farr, like top guys that's professional already. And I'm sparring with these guys. So now when I'm able to go home on a back to an amateur tournament, mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm blowing these dudes away. Like, like dude, you don't understand where, I, where I'm just coming from. Mm-hmm. And it was my mental, you know what I'm saying? I'm just coming from training camp, sparring with Pernell Whitaker, the champion of the world professionally. Mm-hmm. I'm going back to amateurs now and boxing with these guys. I was, I was torturing them. So as you're coming through the ranks, Mayweather is, he's a little younger than no, you. No, we're the same age. Same age? Same age. Oh, okay, okay. But he was from Michigan. <clears throat> right. Right. Did you did you guys know yeah. we, know of each other? Yeah, we okay. met in national tournaments. Like he right. was my brother. Okay. People tell you he was my bro. Like we mm-hmm. met in the nationals, like around eight nine years old with different things. You know, mm-hmm. he was from Michigan. Right. I was from New York. Right. So that New York Michigan That's swagger. Right. It was like we always clicked to him. You know. Mm-hmm. Then we had you know my my other brother Zaire Rahim mm-hmm. from from Philly from Philly. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. So we all was like a little. It was like a group, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we would all meet up in the nationals and we would hang out and that was our little clique. Yeah. Did you see back then or did you figure that he would become the champion that he is, uh, that he became? Did he did you uh, see yeah, that Floyd, level Floyd of skill? Was always good. Yeah. Floyd was, all of us, we was all we was monsters. Mm-hmm. The 1996 Olympic team, look at look us up. So this team goes down in history as one of the best Olympic team ever. Cause mm-hmm. 90 Five percent of our team became world champions. Mm-hmm. Everybody, it was wow. we were bad. Tarver, yeah. Antonio Tarver, oh, yeah. all of it. Yeah, he's supposed we, to be coming to the show too. We yeah. had a bunch of guys yeah. that came to the show, and yeah, mm-hmm. we was, we, you know, we it was it, 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 it you know it was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing, my guy. It was yeah. Amazing. So yeah. Did, had you and had you and uh, Floyd had y'all ever sparred or no, had any? No. So Floyd was I was one hundred and thirty nine pounds. Floyd mm-hmm. was like one eighteen. Okay. He was lighter than me. He was smaller. Like I said, that was my brother. Yeah. That was my brother. Like growing up, we had no thoughts, no train of thought of fighting, none of that. Oh, really? None of that. We he was smaller than me. That was my oh, brother. Okay. It was it was it was it was, you know, it was solid. Did you, you know, um, me not being in that business, but you always hear about Don King, mm-hmm. right? Did you ever do business with yeah. Don King? Yeah. It's, I made a lot of money with Don King. Okay. That was what I was about to a lot ask. Of money. So you see the movies and, yeah. and you you hear all of that. Is are the things they say or has been said about Don King uh true or that just wasn't your experience? So I'm older now. Mm-hmm. I've been through life. And my thing is not here to bash Don or do anything. Right. I just would tell you this. Don King is a businessman that conducts business his way. Okay. That should make sense. Yeah. That's it. But 
made a lot of money with Don King. Mm -hmm. A lot of money. Mm -hmm. A lot of money, great lifestyle, great uh, experiences. Were you able to keep it working with Don King though? You, you making it? Yeah, you know? we. Yeah, I won okay. the world championships with Don and everything. Okay. St. Louis, all yeah. that. Corey Spinks, that was king. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. A chop shop Coley, WBO, chop, that was king. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My my first mm -hmm. fight with Don King, I won the championship of the world. Oh, nice. You know wow. what I mean? That's how he 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 signed me. He, okay. he signed me. He's like, yo. You know, you know, it was the myth was out there. Oh, exactly. bad guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, listen, man, I know what they telling you. I got this amount of money for you. And guess what? Your first fight, you fight. Can you beat him? You know, it was Demarcus Cody at the time. Can you beat him? I'm like, yeah, I could beat him. That's your fight. That's your next fight. Yeah. Get ready. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, as a fighter, yeah. this is your opportunities of what you look forward to. That's right. Fighting for the championship of the world. You know, mm -hmm. any fighter that, you know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. like, yeah, That's hell right. yeah. Let's, let's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Let's go. And and he made that happen. One, one, two, three. Wow. So like I said, I'm not here to talk bad about Don and say, mm -hmm. or say nothing. Yeah. Yeah. No, like, I was just curious, you know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. you're he's, in that world, you know. He's, like yeah. I said, he conducted business Don King's way. Uh -huh. You know, what was the other? So it was him and the other white guy was the big, uh, the other promoter. Um, I was with uh, sh uh, I know Lou it Duva. when I hear it. Nah, it's another one. Al. Oh, Bob Al Aaron. Heyman. Bob. Yeah, then Bob. Bob, Al Heyman and Bob. Aaron. So yeah. no, back then Al. No, um, I wasn't. When I was younger, I wasn't around. When I fought later mm -hmm. on, you know, I I discovered Al Heyman's name when I was from Vernon Forest. Okay. Rest in peace of my brother Vernon Forrest. We was uh stable mates in, mm -hmm. in the main events training camp. And um we, we was roommates. And uh he's always talking about, yeah, my manager Al Heyman, you know, so good. Mm -hmm. Al came from music. I was a music mode and stuff sure like that. Was. Yeah, yep. and so sure was. but he also, you know, handled fighters and things like mm -hmm. you know, and Vernon used to always tell me about, you know, my manager Al Heyman, Al Heyman, Al Heyman. And I and I was like, you know, back at this time I was managed by uh Shelly Finkel. Mm -hmm. I was with Shelly Finkel and Lou Duva. And um, so you know, I didn't really, I didn't know Al. I never met him, never seen him, never none of that. But he would always say, you know, you know, yo man, I need some money, man, man. I gotta get out on the phone, get out. Yeah. I was like, I right, get your phone, get out, like you yeah. know. But his money, his money would come through. Al took care of him. Mm -hmm. This is from back then, you know. Then I, you know, I discovered the name a little bit later when I fought Mayweather. Mm -hmm. And so this is like oh wait, mm -hmm. I heard the name again. But this is before he became big Al Heyman. Mm -hmm. I heard the name again, you know, Floyd was doing business with him and managers and stuff like that. You know, I was always been a shadow guy. He's he's yeah. he's, he's always been he's never been like a limelight mm -hmm. out front guy. He's always been like a shadow guy and you know, almost like a myth. But yeah. he's always got the job done. Okay. In, in great business aspects. Once you turn pro, what was some of your most one of your most memorable and most difficult opponents? Like somebody who really just gave you a hard time, whether they was hitting you hard. Or you was giving it to them and they just wouldn't go. They just would not quit. So one of my toughest fights came at um when I was 15 and 0. Mm -hmm. For a guy by the name of Mickey Ward. Mm -hmm. Irish Mickey Ward. And this was Oh, I heard about him. Yeah, they said he's the dude with the hands of stone or something he was, like that. Yeah, he, he, he had the liver shot. Was a deliver shot. He yeah. would sit you down, boy, park you, put you <laughs> put sit you down and pull an emergency break up. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like no joke. But um I defeated him. I beat him. I got hit with the liver shot in probably like the eighth round. Mm -hmm. You know, I survived the round and I came back and I beat him. So once I beat Mickey Ward at 15 and 0, that was my stepping up stone mm -hmm. to be like, okay, this kid right here is gonna be the next mm -hmm. one. People don't understand how devastating them body, body shots mm. are. What does it feel like when you get hit in your liver like that? So to me, a body shot is worse than a head shot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because a head shot, you get hit in the head, boom, you can shake it off. Mm -hmm. A body shot, Stick with you, brother. Yeah, you can yeah. cancel everything. You, you <laughs> everything is over, brother. You just have to pat the floor, look, look for a soft spot because I'm going yeah. down. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But you know, luckily, luckily, you know, I survived it. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I took it. I mean, he caught me good. Oh, my, pop, pop. I said, Damn. and we talk about it all the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He, he, he's a good friend of mine. Mickey oh, was a great guy. He's a great guy, and um, you know, I, I just. He caught me. I survived it. I boxed him. Yeah. I bo I came back here. Here to tell you, I came back and boxed his ears off. I came. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm gonna stay out. You're not getting close to me with none of that no more. Yeah. Like my 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 speed kicked in mm -hmm. 
ocho right there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You I had just, to adapt. You yeah, adapt. adapt. <laughs> Speed, yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. Brr, 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 you know what I mean? And um, I won a 12 round decision. Oh, nice, nice. Once you, once you, so you're here, you're in this pro arena, um, and you come from poverty. Uh, what did you do? What did you buy when you first got to some money? What was the first thing that you did? So, the first thing I did when I got some money was we went to um I'm trying to think of this um steakhouse. <laughs> um anyway, it was the steakhouse from mm-hmm. the Goodfellas when of the of the Italian movie. Remember when he took oh, all the long scene. That yeah. long yeah, when he yeah, took yeah. all the boys yeah. out to eat. That yeah. was in New York. Okay. That was my thing. I took me, my brothers, and probably like my homies, like so we it was about like maybe about eight of us. Mm-hmm. But to me, I was a kid. That's that's a lot. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm 18 years old at this point, you know, and I went out and I always said I want to sit at the head of the table with all of all of with all the boys, bring all the food out, yeah. the pasta, and, and we did it. It was a karma. No, not not karma. What was it called? No. What ah oh, man, it's killing me right now. Famous. What? Huh? No, not church here. Well, what was the first big purchase you made? Was it a house? No, was I'm, it a car? Um, um no, no. So so we went to the restaurant, okay. we sat down, we ate. And um, I always wanted to do that. And that was mm-hmm. like a, you know, so to me, that was like a, probably like an $800 night. You know okay. what I'm saying? And okay. that was big. Like, this is, yeah. we're talking 96. This is, you know what yeah. I'm saying? That was big money back then. Yeah. And uh, my first big purchase of something I bought, um, probably a car, yeah. What kind of car did you buy? I bought a um, 96. No, I had, I had, a, I had an escalator already. No, I had a um, Pathfinder already. I think I bought, uh, it was a green, a green S500 Mercedes. Okay. So my thing was this, I always wanted to go into the showroom and buy the, the car off the floor. I didn't want the, like, I don't know why I always thought like the ones that's in the back, like them is like the <laughs> the, the, the crappy car. I don't want those. Like, I'm talking about real the yeah. Mercedes dealership. So I yeah. went in, was looking around, I was like, that one right there. Mm-hmm. So, it, <laughs> I mean, me thinking that, it was silly. The, <laughs> the guy was telling me like, Okay, yeah, yeah, that's that's a good one. I got I I got one in the back for you, brand new. I'm like, no, I want that car yeah. right there. Clean it up, there, and you know, now that was silly because that's the display. That's Hello. the one that everybody yeah, been everybody in sitting, and sitting there, touching. I didn't know. <laughs> I'm thinking that was big talk. I'm yeah. like, yeah, give me that car right there off the showroom floor. Yeah. Open the doors up, roll yeah. up the door. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was an it was an experience for me. Right. It was a flex. Yes. It, it no, flex. Well, like I said, it was it was it was an experience. Yeah, it was yeah. an experience. Mm-hmm. It was something that you watched on television. You mm-hmm. watched. You heard from the rap songs. You heard that. You were like, yo, mm-hmm. I gotta go to the, to a dealership, a big boy dealership, yeah. Mercedes, and buy the car off the showroom floor. I got you. Yeah. So let me oh, ask you what this: rap, What rap songs was you listening to at that time? What's the mindset when you when you in that? In that part of your career, probably like everything. Ninety six. This is I'm talking about Tupac. Biggie. Who was you hanging out with? Also, because you also starting to. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm from New York, so I was like everybody, like you know, like, like I said, Tupac is my family. You know, Biggie, Biggie's from Brooklyn. That's that's Brooklyn. He's like mm-hmm. the Godfather of Brooklyn. So you know what I mean. So I had a chance to hang out with Big. You know, I'm, I'm my man Undies. Undies brought me mm-hmm. to the studio. Big was there the first time I, that I met Big. Mace was there. Big Big was on the couch sleeping, and um, he was snoring really loud. And so I looked at Un like, "Yo, he all right?" Mm-hmm. I'm like, "No, no, that's just how he sleep. Yeah, that's just how he sleep." And out of nowhere, Big popped up like, "Yo, what's up? What's up? What's up?" And Un introduced us. I was like, "Yeah, I know, I know you, cause you know, in the Golden Girls, I was in the paper every day, every day. Mm-hmm. So everybody in, in the town knew me." He was like, "Yeah, I heard about you. I heard about you. Keep it up. Everything gonna be smooth, smooth." And I was like, "Oh, that's Biggie. Like, you know what I mean?" So mm-hmm. Biggie, Jay Z. Jay Z, I mean, I've done a ton of Jay Z videos and mm-hmm. hung out with Jay and was 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 with The Rock and all that. Um, Little Kim, mm-hmm. uh, Foxy Brown, like you know, just just in New York, New yeah. York. You know, I was young, I was around Big Daddy Kane, um, Slick Rick, all these mm-hmm. guys. You know what I'm saying? So with you and Tupac being cousins, did yeah. y'all hang out like quite no, a bit? No, oh, you didn't. No, no. So he was, you know, he was he was really, we knew we we related, but Pac had a busy schedule. He was on yeah. the road all the time. Plus he was. He was in and out of New York, but I was I was young. I was mm-hmm. young. Plus, I, plus when he was there, I wasn't there because I was on the road, training camps and things mm-hmm. like that. And um, we bump heads a couple times. I mean, not bump heads, but we yeah, ran across each, each other, other. A, 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 yeah. you know, saying a couple times at family functions and mm-hmm. what's up, Pac, I, you know, and we just mm-hmm. kept it moving and everything was smooth. 
I mean, so now that you're seeing this success, you're making money, you mm -hmm. know, you're knocking fools out and all of that. Um, how were you able to, you know, maintain that hunger? Because it's easy to get comfortable. Now your life has changed. You right. know, you're comfortable. Now the sense of urgency still is not like it was when you were in poverty. You know yeah. what I mean? So because how did you maintain that hunger? How yeah, did you keep that yeah, going? Yeah, it was because my mentors was mm -hmm. Pernell Whitaker, Mike mm -hmm. Tyson. They had... I had money, but they had money, money, money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mike could blow an M bag like it's nothing. I'm yeah. like, I want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you got to keep There's levels to it. There's yeah. levels to it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I had a house, but when I went mm -hmm. to Virginia, I seen Purnell's house. I'm like, oh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was different. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you know what I mean? So you like, you know, I had cars, but I seen Purnell had the, you know, Purnell was the first one I seen, you know, with the big body Benz that Biggie talked about. He mm -hmm. had it delivered to the gym. Brand new, bow tie, and we were just in the gym. After we finished, we went outside. I was like, oh, that's the car Biggie be talking about. Like, mm -hmm. you know? And it was right there delivered. It had the, at the first time, like, with the phone on the dashboard, you open the little thing up, yeah. and you get them, and that was like fancy. Oh, yeah, us. yeah, the phone. Because I had one. I yeah. Had, remember my, uh, yeah, yeah. My remember mistake? on the dashboard, yeah. you press yeah, the thing, yeah, you and it slides up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was big. Come on, you know, I'm, I'm telling yeah, the truth. Come yeah. on, it's no cap. Because people used to say that, remember, because the, the panes were, the, the windows were double pane. Double, it was thick. They super was this thick. thick. Bulletproof. They were saying it was bulletproof. Bulletproof, yeah. yeah. I, don't I don't know, know if it really was. was bulletproof. I don't know if it was, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? That was for sound. Was not. I'm glad that, that we didn't have to find sound. out. We yeah. had to find out, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, they were super thick. Yep. The door was heavy, like that, that front seat. Like when you yeah. sat in it, you felt like yeah. somebody. Like yeah. yo, you know what I'm saying? You was, you was, you know what I'm saying? So I seen Purnell had his car delivered to the gym, mm -hmm. and you know what I'm saying? He's gonna be shorty. Come on, shorty, let's go jump in the car. Yeah. We we jet, and I'm like, oh, this is this is lit. Yeah. So you know, my success and his success was different. Yeah, that's right. It was different. That's so right. I always knew that. You know, I made it, but I made it for the homies in the hood from the block that I came from. Yeah, I didn't make it to. My peers yeah. that no, I'm, I got that you. I'm right so that here kept around. You, that kept you. That kept hungry. me. It kept me hunger. Yeah. Kept me going more. You know, you watching Mike Tyson crash a Rolls Royce and give it away. That's real. You like <laughs> he just crashed a four hundred thousand dollar car, yeah. and I'm like, so what? I don't even got that kind of money yet. Four hundred thousand. Yeah. So know what let I'm me saying? ask you: Is it? I is, might have had four hundred thousand. That was it. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Is it so, because maybe at the time, which I know you came to make millions, but is it because maybe the heavyweights at that time? It was a bigger draw and a bigger purse than like the welter rate weights. Yeah, and the but lighter. you didn't look at it like that. You was mm -hmm. a fighter. You mm -hmm. was a fighter. You did what he did. He did what you did. Yeah. And that was a fighter. You knew that by me shopping my craft, mm -hmm. one day I'll have an opportunity mm -hmm. at making that or somewhere close to that. Right. You know, well, I, I, always... well, I guess what I mean is like somebody like a Tyson, because it's heavyweight and people like all oh, the right. big guys, you know, his purse might be yeah, 20 no, no, million, no, 30 million no, a fight. No, no. Where, I, yeah, I can yeah. never. Add up with what Michael Michael was making thirty million dollars a fight. Remember, so this is when thirty million dollars yeah. was yeah. big boy money. That's like right. nobody was getting that, but That's Tyson. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I never, I never even thought that I even mm. could make that being a little guy like that. But I knew that right. I could make a couple million, right? And you know what I'm course, saying, and, and and hold my own weight. You know For what I'm sure. saying? I was a little guy, so I'm like, all right. Yeah. I might don't need five Rolls Royces. I just need one. Just you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Try not to crash. Yeah, I, I get a Rolls Royce and a truck behind yeah, it. That's yeah. cool. You know, Mike has come through three, four Roses back to back. You know what yeah. I'm saying? With the security team and the trucks behind that. So I'm like, oh, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, I might can't get all that, but I could get one of those and one of those. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So how, how much did not only your life, but how much did things change for the people around you? Because a lot of times they say that when you become successful, mm -hmm. you don't change, the people around you change. So did you have to navigate that in terms of family, friends, all the homies? Because you you seem like you wanted to take everybody. You wanted everybody to mm -hmm. go. To the dead, but, to the yeah, 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 but so, could that, but how did, I know so a lot even, of times that's not the case. Even though I wanted, what I wanted, my pops was still in control. Mm. Pops was always in, he was in control. Mm -hmm. And my pops, you know, my, pop, my pops is a ninth degree black belt in Shotokan Jiu Jitsu. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Three time kickboxing world champion. He was a ninja. People didn't play with my pops. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he's a man of very few words. He, was, he never was emotional, never was loud, none of that. He's very quiet. He, he makes minimum talks, minimum movements, but he was serious. And he, like, my friends knew. But it was pops. Pops just look at you and they out. They're like, all right, Zach, all right, we're gonna we're gonna get you later. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they be gone. So pops always knew like that's not happening. Yeah. 
That's not happening. Like, you know, he went through his career already. Mm -hmm. He went through life already. He he was in the mean streets of Brooklyn and navigated through all of the, you know, the BS. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he he already knew what was going to happen and what to prepare me for. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? So no matter what I wanted, Pops was always there to be like, Yeah. We ain't doing that. Yeah. We gotta make a move, five minutes, tell your friend later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> like yeah, because oh, you, 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 you managed, you know you managed to kind of kind of elude controversy outside the ring for the most part. Yeah. Right. But in the ring. I got know. 10 brothers. Yeah. It was, it was no it was no problems. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we had, had no problems. Resources. You had resources. Yeah, we, I had resources. You <laughs> know resources, what I'm saying? Yeah. I had a big I, I got a big family. I yeah, got a you big had family. resources. You know so what I'm saying? So you cruising in your in your in your pro career. And so you you run into you run into how you pronounce the the guy's name Casa Sue Casa Sue yeah that's Kasa my first Zoo. loss yeah that was your first loss but you got wait you you missed mad stuff that was I was twenty eight and zero already I right. done ran up one two three two 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 time champ of the world already right but yeah. but that was still a controversial that was oh, yeah, a controversial 100%, 100%. loss yeah yeah but I'm just leading you up to yes. show you that it just didn't jump from that was like the first you know what I'm saying that mm -hmm. was the first. Loss that I had, I was mm -hmm. I was I was professional already, twenty eight wins. I mm -hmm. was like I was the son and sure. face of New York and Brooklyn. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Now I run into this to this point. Right. Yeah. It was it was heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. How did how did how did you deal with that? Because for one, I I went back and I looked at it. I remember I it when it happened in yeah. real time, but I went back and looked at it. And though you were dazed, you weren't out. Right. 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 And that's what pissed you off mm -hmm. is the fact that, you know, it was like you did all this training and you did all this and they the ref couldn't at least give you the respect. Not even to, that, bro. Look yeah. at my career up until that point. Exactly. That's what I'm I saying. I came into this fight a champion. Right. I wasn't a contender. Right. He was a champion. I was a champion. We was fighting for the undisputed championship of the world at mm -hmm. Junior Walter Wade. And this is in 2001. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So you got to understand, I went down. I got up. Like, in my mind... When I went down, I was like, get up, get up. I, I, it was two seconds. I was on the ground, two seconds. Yep. You literally counted one, no, two, and I was back up on my feet again. Yeah, you jumped up. I was talking yeah. to the ref, you know what I'm saying? But here's another thing, right? That I, you know, me and my friends were talking about this the other day. I said, in leading up to this point, going back in training, there's never been a training session where I was ever taught of how to get dropped and get up. Right. There's no fighter that's ever taught. How to get knocked down? That's what I was gonna ask you. You gotta I was think like, about that. There is no schooling because the like, there is no schooling to that. Okay, you don't, you, nobody knows yeah. this. Because sometimes you just kind of get your breath, but it was like I guess the, the uh -huh. lion, the uh -huh. fight in you was like that. Look, I'm, I'm 28 and no I ain't hurt. knockouts. <laughs> yeah, the face of this. It's like your brain that. was moving faster than your champ body. of the world. Yeah. I had everything. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like what? You dropped me. I'm I'm gonna kill him. Yeah, and I jumped up. You know what I'm saying? So there is no schooling. Mm -hmm. Of how to get knocked down and, and, and take a knee, mm -hmm. relax, take two breaths. No, I exactly. mean, you never learned this. You right. never, you know what I'm saying? There right. is no class for this. Yeah. And it hadn't happened to that. It it's never happened. happened. Exactly. It's yeah. never happened. So yeah. I'm like, you hadn't been what? Prepared for what? That. Yeah. I'm, 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 my thing is to get up. And if you see me, I'm looking at the ref trying to like tell him, like, yo, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. And he like, it's over. And I'm like, over. Right. You crazy? Like you can't you don't stop my fights and you, yeah. now you see yeah, me. Yeah, you went ballistic. Yeah. I yeah. was I was, you know, I yeah. mean, le looking back now, I was young, I was immature, mm -hmm. I was childish, you know what I'm saying? But I was hurt. Yeah. I was hurt. Yeah. I was I was I, I felt like my I was dishonored. I felt like my 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 you know, if if I had a badge of honor, it was taken from me mm -hmm. in front of the whole world. Somebody just took something from me yeah. in front of the whole world. And being from where I'm from, Brownsville, mm -hmm. Brooklyn. You don't do that. Right. It's nobody. I know you could go to the hood and take nothing from right. nobody in them streets. Little kid or big kid, yeah. they're going to they gonna fight you back. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And I just felt like, this. remember, this is pay-per-view, guys. Mm -hmm. This is in the old one, pay-per-view. The yeah. whole world is watching. Yeah. This is my first time. I watched it real this time. This is my first yeah. time headlining in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. I'm a Brooklyn kid. Yeah. I'm going across the, across the country mm -hmm. to, to headline a pay-per-view fight in one of the biggest anticipated fights of this generation mm -hmm. uh, at that time. You know what I'm saying? So of course when I went down, I was like, what? It's yeah. over. Nah. Right. And I just I just snap. Yeah. I just snapped, bro. And I just I just went back to who I knew how to be. Mm -hmm. And that was that Brownsville, yeah. Brooklyn, 
You went to the Hood default kid. mode. Yeah. I went back to the what? You don't stop my fights. I'm gonna take your head off. And I try to fight the ref. Yeah. I threw the chair. <laughs> I try to anybody in my yeah. sight. I was hitting them. I saw that. Police. Every yeah. like what? What? Back up. What? 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 I was. I just went crazy, bro. Mm -hmm. And if you watch, my dad was grabbing me like, it's okay, it's okay. And I'm like, no. I'm like, mm -hmm. what you mean? Like, you know. And I just wanted to go crazy, but mm -hmm. you know. Just looking back, and I just tell people that was real emotion. Yeah, that was real, that was real live time emotion. That was mm -hmm. like no no schooling, no you know what I'm yeah. saying. It was nothing. That was real. When people seen that, that was real deal feelings. If the ref hadn't have stopped it, you think you would have watched him? Come on, yeah. Come on. Do you think he was formidable? Do you think he was? I I, I know so. I know he never he never even uttered a rematch. Uttered. Even <laughs> talked about it. Yeah. Y'all know me. I, yeah. I I tried to campaign for the rematch that night. <laughs> You know, I was walking around the hotel. Right. Where he at? I know he ain't handing my belts out. You know what I'm saying? I was, I, I was going ballistic, going crazy. You know what I mean? Like, you don't take nothing from me. Right. I'm gonna fight him now. Yeah. Like they would tell you, if Zab seen it, he was gonna fight right there on the stairs in the lobby, MG, and wherever. No smoke. He went back to Australia. Okay. Never Who did he fight after you? I don't even remember, don't bro. Remember. I never even studied his career. I yeah. never even. I just, I just, I. Just, you know, once I found out that the rematch and the situation. Wasn't gonna be able to happen again. I just we mm -hmm. we moved on. I said, let me go get another war title. Yeah. How did you deal with that though? I mean, after that, because you know, mm -hmm. just emotional. So I was the son of Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and this is funny, right? This is like the same time around the time when Puff Daddy made that shake, take that money, shake mm -hmm. that Harlem, that Harlem. Uh, oh my God, yeah. bro, I had, bro, I went through all of that. Zab did the Harlem shake. He the only Brooklyn boy that did the Harlem shake in yeah. the ring, and it was so funny. So. Now I gotta come back to my Brownsville look, my Brownsville days. I'm in the streets, they popping up. What would you say? I ah, hit people in the mouth, lawsuits. <laughs> Damn. I'm, Damn. I, oh, bro, I'm finding out the hallway. Okay. So I'm suspended, one year suspended. Mm -hmm. They find me a um, $100,000, $100,000 fine. I go back home. I, 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 I got a whole year now to just, I can't fight. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, 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 this is another disrespectful thing that I think that boxing did to me because, you know, this is what I've done my whole life up until this point. I've never done, I never, I never had a job. I never played no sports. I never did nothing. Never did nothing, nothing. They said, for one year, what you know how to do and how you make your living and everything, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. What That's, did that do to you? I mean, it, it, it created animalistic situations. Mm -hmm. Now it forced me to be Outside, it forced me to be. I'm, 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 right. I'm, I'm, let's see. I was still in my 20s. I'm young, I'm a young boy. I'm rich. That's crazy. I got millions. So, so, I got going all back the, to, so I got, going back to what I said, I got all of the resources. I got all of yeah. the, you know, you know, cars, jewelry, mm -hmm. all the fun stuff. I'm known, I'm famous. I'm, now, it just forced me to be outside. Exactly. So, like I said in the beginning, when I asked you how you was able to contain that and channel all of that, mm -hmm. but you always had the ring to do it in. Yeah. That's taken from you. Yeah. So now people outside is getting it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. Like I was getting in street fights, yeah. But I think what calmed me down with the, with the street fights was the lawsuits. Yeah. Yeah, I got like two lawsuits and they was pretty steep. Was street pretty, fight, similar. Yeah. I'm, pretty, I'm asking you because you are a professional boxer. Is it is it similar to, to no, boxing? No such thing. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's what's different? Everything. Mm -hmm. Me. So this is why I tell people that wish. This is what I. This is what I tell people that wish and want to think about fighting me. I say, you see how from a baby, they've been putting your socks on before your shoes for you to go outside. Mm -hmm. That's how I've been fighting and trained to fight people. So that's not, it's, it's, it was almost unfair mm -hmm. to fight regular guys because the skill level that I possess and that I knew, people didn't know this. They, right. they didn't know how to, like, I knew how to fight. I knew how to stand in the pocket and size didn't matter. Size don't matter. Size mm -hmm. don't matter. I had a skill that was unmatchable. You know, let me ask you about size because me and Michael J. White, we were talking about that. Yeah. So size cannot matter, but if, if skill, if size applies. Size with skills, okay, it's different. Yeah. Now okay. that's, that, that, that's different. Right. So Zab Judah, with his skills, fighting a Mike Tyson at that level, at his skills, no. Right. No, Mike would have, right. no, definitely no, you can't be. But a regular guy, Mike Tyson size, exactly. without the skill level, yeah. just with the, yeah, I'll, I'll just... knock you out. Like, no, 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 you won't. <laughs> no, you can't. Right. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? No, you can't. Yeah. And I was 
No, you can't. What's the nastiest knockout you ever delivered to somebody? In the ring? Or out? Nah, I wasn't really... I mean, my, you know what? It, it came to a level where, like, my, you know, like me being known in the streets, mm-hmm. people didn't really mess with me. People didn't really... They didn't really... You know, after... You know, after that 2001 Casa Zoo stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, for street fights, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't really get into them. People didn't really, they didn't really interfere with me. I mean, they, mm-hmm. I was on TV all the time. I was yeah. on t- people knew as Ab Judah, he's mm-hmm. a boxer. Mm-hmm. Right. We ain't trying to fight him. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, but you know, in the ring, yeah, I, I got 30 knockouts, 15 What's in the, the first round. Like that you think of, like, damn, I almost killed that boy. Oh, bro. It don't feel like that. I probably, I probably witnessed that, mm-hmm. but I didn't feel like that. I felt like so in 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 my sport, it was I was taught and trained to inflict pain mm-hmm. the fastest you could do it in the most hurtfulest way you could do it. Mm-hmm. That's what my pops always taught me. He said, inflict the most pain you can inflict on a person the fastest and the meanest that you could do it. Mm-hmm. You could get them out of there in thirty seconds. Break them up. That's that Mike Tyson spirit too. I promise y'all, bro. I yeah. promise y'all. That's mm-hmm. that's real talk. Mm-hmm. Any fighter tell you that. You know what I'm saying? So a fighter fighting people outside on the street, it's it's very rare you're gonna find that a street person beat up a, a boxer, right? You, or, or or any kind of a fighting mm-hmm. athlete to that. Mm-hmm. You know, even even martial arts. Even a, a young martial artist that study martial arts from young all the way up to grown, a regular street dude is not messing with him. You're right. not. Right. You're not, you don't have the, the discipline, because it takes discipline to be a great fighter. I mm-hmm. tell people all the time, you can't just swing it. No, it's, it's not about swing, it's about discipline, knowing how, knowing how to control yourself, mm-hmm. knowing how to place the right punches in the right places and at the right speed and the right power. Mm-hmm. So, so to develop that type of situation, you gotta be very educated on what you're doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I, I just don't find a street person outside of being yeah. able to- I wanna ask you a technical question. Defense wise, are you which is more efficient to you? And this is just me asking as a boxing fan. Um, is it the 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 crab, the shoulder uh defense, or like George Foreman would do? You know, that one. I always thought that that one had George Foreman. No, do. neither. Neither that I was not a fan of neither, neither one of them. I right. come from the Pernell with a head movement. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I was always taught move your head or somebody gonna move it for you. Mm. Make a lot of sense, you know yeah, what I'm really. saying? I mean, the shoulder roll, that was a style, you know, that that came from the from the Midwest, you know, mm-hmm. James Tony in Detroit. That's right. Mayweather, Michigan. Mm-hmm. Like they they pick up that style and they master that style. So mm-hmm. I always tell people, when you don't really know what you're doing with that style and you mimicking it and you just watching somebody do when you're trying to do mm-hmm. it, you're gonna get knocked out. Because you don't know <laughs> what you're doing. Right. You don't know why you even rolling the shoulder. You you don't you don't know why. That's why you never you never see me do that yeah. ever. Yeah. You know, that wasn't my style. You never see me do the George for me. Yeah. Because that's not my style. You yeah. know, George did that because George knew, let me get this body. All his body was like a brick. It was like that table. Yeah. But so he knew that you're not, uh, you're not gonna get here. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So for somebody else that's trying to mimic it, they're gonna just gonna do this and they body not right. <laughs> they going down right. on the first body shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. So it's yeah. like fight the way you know how to fight or the way you train. And right. that's the way. That's the thing that I've done. Right. So coming through the boxing ranks, and of course, as we was talking about, uh, the OG Jay Prince. Yeah. Um, you had dealings with Jay Prince in the in the boxing. Arena? Um, you know, we never did uh business together, but I've been mm-hmm. around Jay for a long time. Jay's mm-hmm. like one of my mentors. I love, I love, I love. Was he I there loved... at the beginning of Floyd's career? Say it again. He was he there at the beginning yeah, of Floyd's he was, career? He was he was he was with Mayweather. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Floyd did um a lot of a lot of. Well, I don't know if it was the beginning. It was like somewhere like in the beginning. Well, obviously, in the middle. you guys have been fighting since. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Young, yeah, yeah. young, but. Nah, but Jay's a, Jay's a dope dude. He's <clears> dope. <throat> he's, 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 he's very, um, he's a very educated person. Mm-hmm. Like, he's very educated book wise, street wise, sense wise. You know, because you find a person that she's, sometimes you might find a person, they're not book educated, but they're very street smart. That's right. They know how to maneuver around the street. Then you might find a person that's a business person. But they're square in the streets. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You know what I mean? So it's, it's hard it's, to find that balance. It's rare to find someone yeah. like that. So Jay is yeah, Jay is definitely one of those guys. I I remember being at Jay a Jay house and um we were riding on four wheelers. We were riding four wheelers and he was taking me way out. We was way out in in the uh I think it was just me and him. We were way out in the uh farm and the land. We were riding, going to see something else. And Jay kept saying, stay behind me, stay behind me. I'm like, yeah, I got it. And I hit a tree. 
and I flew in the air and I hurt myself pretty bad. I mean, long story short, I was knocked out on the ground. The next thing I heard was Jay was like, you all right? You all right? And Jay picked me up, put me on top of his four-wheeler and rolled me back to the house. I mean, I was all busted. I had blood and everything Damn. all busting out and stuff. Damn. Yeah, but I remember, it was, and it was just me and Jay, way, we were far from the house. Is this in Houston? It's in Houston. Oh, okay. It's in Houston. And, um, <clears throat> and, and um, you know, I just remember, you know, Jay taking me back. We went, we went back to the house and um, I got myself together. But yeah, but Jay has always been an inspiration to me, man. Mm -hmm. I've been around him for, for a long time. You know, just, you know, the thing was, uh, the reason why we probably never did business was because at the time when he came around and I was dealing with him, I always had other management and I was in mm -hmm. deals already. Okay. But I always hung around him. He'll tell you, Zab was mm -hmm. like my fighter. He was, mm -hmm. I was right there with him, gaining the knowledge, gaining mm -hmm. all information. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. because, because I liked the way he, Maneuvered and conducted itself, you know okay. what I'm saying? You know, so as a person, he was a, you know, he was, he was, he was, he was a very, very, very sharp. To the point, and what I, what I, what I really admired about him was he was connected with the Lord. Yeah, I don't he's know if people know that about. Yeah, Jay he's Prince, a very he's spiritual. He's a very. Yeah. He has a that man has a connection with God, bro. I'm so saying, I mean, we all do. I mean, now that mm -hmm. my walk of life now, I feel like I have a connection with God too. It's, it's the same way. But you learn this. From people like that, and you watch a guy like this to be so ferocious outside and be a little guy, you like, wow, look what he represents. He represents yeah. the rap a lot business and yeah. Scarface, and these guys are they notorious and no, but the guy when you sit down, you talk to him, you like, wait a minute, this guy is different. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that kind of attracted me to him, like, wow, this is dope. This is mm -hmm. what I want to be like. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I want to, you know, you can still be gangster. Yeah, but you have the connection with the Lord. That's right. So and then. Also, with having a connection with the Lord, it balances you because there's, no matter where you at in the streets, there's, you have boundaries. When you connect yeah. with the Lord, you have boundaries. Mm -hmm. There's things you cannot and you will not do mm -hmm. because you're gonna break your, you're gonna break your relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I always admire that and respect that about Jay. You know okay. What I'm saying? Always. Yeah. So as you're moving along, and then so your first loss was to, um, I don't know, I keep messing. Kasazu. Kasazu. And then your, your what, what was your second loss? That was uh, was that Garcia? Second loss was probably Danny Garcia. Yeah, yeah Danny Garcia. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So did that did that have the same sting as um, uh, with with that first gentleman? No. Yeah. I mean, of course, I was mad and upset mm -hmm. and hurt. I mean, the reason why the Garcia fight didn't really hurt me because we went through a twelve round bloodbath. Mm -hmm. When you look at Danny today, you see he got a cut in his mm -hmm. head that 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 I that I that, that I did that. You know, mm -hmm. I got a cut on my eye over here that he did that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like I went to war. no matter what, when you wash your face in the morning, you like, oh fucking Danny. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm pretty sure he gonna say yeah. thing. The goddamn Zab. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And um, you know, and just the type of fight that was in, the mano to mano, the mm -hmm. back and forth, the bloodbath, and yeah. you know when you give your nuts and guts to something, Even you know, you win, lose, lose a draw, you yeah, still right. feel like, I gave it my all, bro. Exactly. I stood tall exactly. on 10 toes and battled. I mean, that's one thing about my career, we could go through every fight, you see, I've, I've, I've never backed down from nobody. Mm -hmm. I fought everybody toe to toe, hand to hand, win, lose, a draw, mm -hmm. we gonna fight. Yeah. One thing about it, there's no opponent that'd be like, I ran through Zab. Nobody. Right. If they are, they lying. Big yeah. cat. Big cat. <laughs> Big yeah, you cat. You said it wasn't no walk in the no, park. No, there's no walk in the park, yeah. bro. It was like, yo, I, I had to fight. Yeah. I had to fight. You know what I'm saying? And Zab gave me, yeah, he could punch. There's nobody say I can't punch. Mm -hmm. And he's fast. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he got skills. So Have you ever broke your hand in the ring? Yeah, I broke my hand on Demarcus Coley, Chop Chop. Okay. So I broke my hand in the third round. I had to fight from the third round to the 12th round with one hand. Damn. And you know, if you go back and watch it now, you could, you know, like now I go back and I watch it, I could see it. Yeah. But at that time, he couldn't see it. Okay. You know, I was doing a lot of feints and yeah. head movement and talking. I was talking to him a lot. Yeah. I was doing a lot of um, profanity. Yeah. Using a lot of profanity. And this, and this was, this was, you know, and it's true. When a person starts using a lot of profanity or stuff like that, it's because they try, they're covering up something or mm -hmm. they're hiding something. Mm -hmm. That's what I was doing. I was hiding. <laughs> I had a broken Did left Did you know hand. that you had broke it when you, when you broke it? I knew it. Okay. I knew it. And mm -hmm. when I, I I dropped him, mm -hmm. he went down, and, I, and I, I I felt this pain that I I said, what is it? It, was, it just it shot through my whole body. I was yeah. like, 
But when I turned around, he went down. So I thought the fight was over. Mm -hmm. He got up. I said, damn. oh my God, damn. And then the bell rang, ding. We went to the corner and I was like, I went to the corner. I, I told my dad, I, said, I think I broke my hand. He's like, don't worry. So my dad is always, he's like, he a renegade, bro. He's yeah. like, man, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Don't, don't worry about that. Use the other hand. Like, you yeah. know, my, my dad is a fighter's fighter's. Yeah. A real, like, a yeah. man, man, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so. You know, and like you still came you, out victorious on that fight. Uh, yeah, I won the fight. I won the title. One handed, one fight. hand. Yeah, oh, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Big shout out to Shop Shop. He was a, he he was, he was a great guy, and I I even you know thank him for giving me the opportunity at yeah. even going that's for right. it. That was that was dope. Yeah. Now I know that pain. I broke this hand too. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. when you do left it, hand. Yeah, it's left me, hand. Me me too. I swung wild, hit somebody in the top of the head, mm. broke that, and was like, mm. yeah. I hit him right on his right on his chin. Boom, broke the left hand. Like I even had my my doctor had they had to re re the rebuild the structure in the hand oh, and all that stuff. Oh, damn. it was crazy, bro. It was yeah, it was it was ugly. So now I had a cast, <laughs> a cast on my arm. Yeah, wow, oh, it was crazy. So what year did you end up finally coming in in uh, squabbing with Mayweather? Before then, oh wait, oh wait, yeah, yeah. So what was the whole? Was that something that y'all knew was was inevitable and and you know, oh wait, oh like six or oh eight? Yeah, oh six. No, it could been, no, oh six. I'm buying mm -hmm. oh six. Yeah, is that something that y'all knew that was in, inevitable? Was that something that y'all both wanted to do? Like he respected no, you? No, no, no. The Mayweather fight, we was cool. Mm -hmm. I even I remember like a couple months before that, I even Floyd had moved to Vegas, and I was I was there in Vegas with him. I helped him move in his house, and mm -hmm. we we was brothers. We, we was like hanging together and all mm -hmm. that, and. Funny story, Mike Tyson told us this maybe about three years prior to us fighting. He told us, we was at his house, we was on the couch. He looked at us, he said, y'all gonna fight? He said, what? What are you talking about? We are not gonna fight. That's my brother, I love my brother. Uh, mm -hmm. We never fight no money. He said, the reason why y'all gonna fight is because y'all gonna be the best two in the world and the money. Mm -hmm. They're gonna offer y'all something y'all could never even think about. And you're gonna be like, what? Nah, bro, it's my, this is my brother. Money ain't gonna turn us nowhere. Fast forward. At this time, uh, was, I was making 1.5, maybe 1.7 was the highest, you know, consistently a lot, you know what I mean? <clears throat> they said, we got $8 million for y'all. That's equivalent today to like the yeah. 10, 20, you know right, what I'm right. saying? We got $8 million. We like, $8 million to do what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, no, I swear, yo, $8 million to do what? Yeah. Fight Floyd. What? Yeah. Man, nah, y'all bugging. Well, we just heard an interview where Floyd said he would fight you and he and he the best that Floyd said, What Floyd can't be be like yeah. it was that. It was he say she say uh -huh. that got us drawn into the ring. Okay. That's on my part. That's yeah. what I discovered. <clears throat> what? He say she say that people said that he said that he could do this and I'm like, Why well, can't nobody beat me? Yeah. Can't nobody do nothing to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the message got back to him, and he was like, "No, I'm the best." Da, 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 da. And I heard him say he the best, and I'm like, "Well, I'm the best." I proved to anybody, and that included anybody. You know, I was yeah. I was on my Brooklyn, like yeah. anybody. What, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and that's there, what, there you go. But let me ask you, that's something interesting that you just said. I mean, you said that that's your brother, but yeah. at the same time, y'all professionals, you're a professional mm -hmm. fighter, so it's not personal. It's right? personal, but at the same time, we wasn't. Uh, I think we wasn't even the same weight at the time. Mm -hmm. We he had to come up or you came up? Yeah, down? he had to come up. Okay. He, he, had, he had to come up. Floyd came up, and that's when they, they started all that. Uh huh. You and, you, you and Floyd, we was like, nah, bro, we ain't fighting, we ain't fighting, we ain't fighting. Then they got on the, he like, well you, well, well, you can't come to the West Coast. I'm like, well, you can't come to New York. You know, you know, you know it, was, <laughs> yeah. it was that kind of stuff, and you know what I'm saying? And we got on that. <clears throat> Did it ever get personal with y'all? What you mean? In terms of leading up to the fight and the fight did it get personal like did it were things said i mean were, yeah we fighters yeah we fighters okay boy from michigan i'm from brooklyn yeah yeah it was worse. but y'all was, was brothers years yeah, years for years yeah, before was, that it was it was but like i said we were still we were still uh fighters we were mm -hmm. still pugilists. we were still top mm -hmm. top trained animalistic yeah yeah, Guys right. with that with that mentality. Is you that know something saying? that you can turn on and turn off? Like when it's like like basketball players, right? When they on the court, it's like, nah, I ain't fucking with you. But then after the game, they go not out. Not for fighters. It's not like that. Nah. So 
when you classify yourself as the best in the world, mm -hmm. nobody could beat you, and you know that in your heart. And somebody's sitting over here and say, yo, I could, what? No, you can't. Mm -hmm. No, you can't. So what's up? Let's do it. <laughs> it's, that, it's that fast. It's so that when y'all fight, does it take something away from their brotherhood? Oh, 100%. Really? We've, we've never been the same ever. Really? Oh, never. wow. We still, I is see that, Now, let me ask you. Is that just- His mama know mama. I mean, I know his mama. He know my mama. But is that- I know his kids. He know my kids. Yeah, like, I get like, it. You know I what I'm saying? It, but I'm saying, is that- just your personality and his personality, or is that the general rule for it's fighters? It's fighters. It's fighters. Oh, wow. Fighters. Fighters. Period. Okay. It's, it's a fight. It's a fighters. Period. It's just okay. it, fighters that I know. Yeah. All the fighters that I know. Yeah. That's that's just you know, you know. Yeah. Once you disrespect a fighter and challenge a fighter, wow. it's on. That's deep. It's on. That's deep. So you you fighting Floyd? I mean, is he was he as skilled a fighter yeah. as everyone says? Yeah, he's one of the, he's. If you remember, you know, the reason for me getting fatigued the last half of the fight was because I tried to really knock his head off the first mm -hmm. the first six rounds of the fight. I pressed it. I pressed mm -hmm. the fight. Mm -hmm. I made the fight happen. I pressed it and pushed it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Hard. I was trying to really get him out of there. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And, you know, I got fatigued by round the six and then in the later rounds. And then he just, he just pop shot. He pop, 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 pop. Mm -hmm. Movement. Pop, 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 pop. You know what I'm saying? He had a game plan. Let me take him in deep water. Let him get tired, and then I'm going to start the work. Okay. My thing was to come in there, start fast. You know what I'm saying? So you when, was trying to get him out of there. Yeah, was, he's, that, he's that was my, boxing. But that was my style. Yeah. That was my style. Yeah. Um, he knew he knew my style. Yeah. I knew his style. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I knew he was going to wait later and do that a little, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Taps, taps, taps you know what I'm saying? Because Floyd, you know, he's not a, a, a you know, a, a knockout, knockout one-punch, yeah, yeah, yeah. but he's a technician. Right. He's very, you know, he's very strategic with his shots. You know, he know how to tie you up, when to tie you up, when when to hold you, yeah. when to move, when to fight. Yeah. Would you consider him one of the uh, most skilled fighters? Boxers? 100%. 100%. Okay. Of our era? Yes. 100%. Yeah. 100%. What are your thoughts on Gravante? What do you mean? As a fighter. Oh, tank. I think, wait, yeah. Tank? Yeah. I think I think Tank is dope. Uh -huh. Tank is dope. Tank is supposed to, Tank reminds me a lot of myself. With mm -hmm. the explosiveness and just the aggressiveness and getting, getting, getting guys out of there, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Not, not playing around with nobody, you know what I'm saying? Just like looking, looking for the shot, getting in there, moving ahead, and there you go, boom! Yeah. And like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so you know, it was a lot of that, you know what I'm saying? The, the style, the talk, the walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think that Adrian Broner lived up to the hype and lived up to what he was supposed to be and what we knew he could be as a fighter? Yeah. Yeah, AB did good. I love AB. AB my little bro. Yeah, he definitely he, he he lived up to his thing. I mean, he got to a a, a and and this my this is real. Mm -hmm. I believe that AB got to a point where he got so good and so big and so fast mm -hmm. that he didn't even believe that you know he didn't even he just believed that I'm great, bro. I ain't even got to train. I ain't even yeah. got to do this. I ain't got to yeah. do that. I'm just I could just go ahead and get things done. Yeah. But no, he's. Nah, A B did a lot of a lot of great things. I mean, the reason for him even getting to that plateau mm -hmm. was because he was great. Right. You don't make it to that level. Oh, that's right. And not be great. If him and Mayweather have fought, who who would you have? I don't like to do mystery fights. That's you it. don't like, like mystery nah, fights. Mystery <laughs> fight. That's like saying yo Zab and Sugar Ray Robinson. Like yeah, you know, it's, yeah, it's silly. Cause you're too close to it, I guess. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, you said coming back to Tupac being your family, mm -hmm. and now recently we have the developments of the Tupac case with Keefe right. D right. and all of that. What what are, what are your thoughts on that? Listen, man, finally we got justice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No matter what, how it came about, justice is good. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The man can rest now. Yeah. The family can rest now. Everybody could be happy now, you know? And if you watch everything that led up to what led up, he told it. He said it. Yeah. You can only judge a man on what comes out of a man's mouth. Right. What you think took him so long? What took who's so law long? enforcement? What you think took him so long? Because he's been saying it. I don't know, bro. I mean, what, I don't what could know. be your speculation? You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know, man. It just, <coughs> I don't know. Yeah. Were you there with? Because I know you work with Vlad. Were you there with Vlad when he was making those first interviews? Because those interviews no, started with no, Vlad, right? No, no, I mm -hmm. wasn't. Okay, I wasn't around for none of them. Okay, not, not one. Speaking I, of Vlad, how was your? I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
No, I was just saying I know that that's where the interview started. Yeah, that's right. So I was just I was I was gonna say that mm-hmm. that would be a weird place mm-hmm. to be a family member and be there when people have. Yeah, that nah, time. nah, 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 nah. I was I was long gone away from that. You know, gone. You know, and like I said about Vlad, nah. One thing I can say about Vlad is Vlad, me and Vlad never had a bad experience ever. Mm-hmm. His checks always went through. He never had a bounce check. <laughs> That's right. He never had a bad, he always paid on time. Mm-hmm. And he's always been very stand up in front with me. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I, I don't have anything, anything bad or negative to say about Vlad. Yeah. He got from a, a great, he from got a, a personal experience. No, yeah. never. He's got a great platform. No, he does. Yeah, he yeah does. He's, he's, he's never sugarcoated. Mm-hmm. He never faked me out. He never tried to set me up. He never, never. Yeah. We always had, we had an up and up, real talk, real, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Brotherhood. Talk, talk to me. How did that come about, you doing the interview with Mike Tyson on Vlad's platform? We are were in the ring. How did that come about? Um, It came about because um, Mike wanted to do the um interview. It was my interview. Mm-hmm. I said, I'll do the interview with you. Mm-hmm. And on the Vlad platform, mm-hmm. you know, Mike didn't want to go on the Vlad the Vlad platform, but he went on it with me. Mm-hmm. He said, you know, if you doing this and you working, I come and do this. What was his apprehension? What was what? Uh, for going, not wanting to go on Vlad. I don't know why. Okay. I don't know why. I mean, it was nothing like big. Like, he, yeah. he's, you know, Mike didn't want to get caught up with the controversy and stuff. Mike is not. Mike gotcha. is not like that. He's like, he's like, yo, you know, I don't want to. Yeah. Because when I watched it, he seemed a little, you know, little. Um, I'm gonna say, uh, you know, uh, unsettled a nah, little bit. Nah, yeah. not, with my, not with me. No, not with you. Yeah, he was, I'm nah, saying I... when Vlad was there, he seemed a little, you know, defensive. I, I would say a little uh, guarded. I mean, I yeah, say. because you got to figure. Yeah. Leading up to this situation, the reputation, the rep- reputation. reputations means okay. everything in life. I got with you. Any, anybody. That's right. If I'm coming into a bank, but I got a bank robbery charge on yeah. my record, and the mm. bank knows that that's the bank robber right there. <laughs> Everybody going to be- going to treat like, you as such. Yeah, they're yeah. going to treat you a, a funny certain way. So I yeah. guess at this time, it was, you know, it was a little bit of, mm-hmm. you know, funny. So Mike was like, you know, but at the end, they did an interview. They was mm-hmm. cool. You know, you know, you know, they was, you know, mm-hmm. every, you know, everything went good. Everybody went home. Yeah. How, yeah. About, how about that? Everybody lived yeah. to see the next day. Everybody was in the same room and yeah. everybody walked out of the room and nothing happened. Yeah. So everything was beautiful. Do you enjoy the media space? Um, what do you mean like by that? In terms of, because you were good at the interview, you were actually right. good at it. Do you? Did you ever think about getting into commentating? You know? I try all kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I, I've done everything. Okay. I'm a rapper now. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I got a, I got, I got a single out. Fight night fresh with me and Johnny. Yeah, you and Johnny. With me yeah. and Johnny, we yeah. got a single out right now. It's on all platforms, and yeah. you know, I'm, I'm rapping right now. You know yeah. what? And I, I just thank God for this opportunity because mm-hmm. I did from 18 years old to 41 years old with my professional boxing. Career. A, a platform career. I never, I, n- I never had a job. I never done anything in that space, mm-hmm. but fight. And right after that, now I'm still young. I'm still vibrant. I'm still yeah. good. I'm still outside. And I'm able to go and start a whole new rap career now. Yeah, that's this dope. Fun. I mean, I got a lot to say. Yeah, I experienced life. So when I get on there and start talking about stuff, it ain't no cap. This is yeah. real talk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know what I mean. So that's I what got I was about to say. to say. I mean, yeah. you lived. 10 lifetimes. Oh, yeah. You know I did I mean? a lot of stuff, man. What, what I want to ask you, what you going through a lot of, you know, life will beat you up. Life beats all of us up, right? Mm-hmm. Um, how did you overcome, you know, your big, your adversities in life? You know, just heartbreak and just life. Okay. Big man. Mm-hmm. Big man. Always. One thing about it, you know what? It's crazy because back in the day, I used to be Zab Jew to the streets. Mm-hmm. New York City know me. He come through. He got. He always got. Like I was always mm-hmm. with a lot of people, and that's because I got ten brothers. So if we all together, we yeah, outside. Resource. We like. We right. My resources. resources. We we, <laughs> we like a gang. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But not. But mm-hmm. I was. I, I'm always with people. Always. Mm-hmm. So nowadays, I get friends calling me, and we pray on the phone. Mm-hmm. They call me when they're going through hard times, and they like not for no money or nothing like that. Yeah. Just for yo, yo, bro, talk to me. Yo, I'm going through this. How do I get out of this? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now I found myself in another whole role of life. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like I, I was just praying with one of my friends last night on the phone. You know what I'm saying? He's going through some things like that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, you know, we find, I, I see your brother. Let me, let me tell you something. Everything that I went through, you know what I did? You know what got me through this? I got on my knees and I prayed. I talked to the Lord. And I kept an honest and clean relationship with him. Mm-hmm. And I was able to sus- sus- I was able to sustain 
and be Zab Super Judah for all these years. Yeah, you know that's what I'm that's a word. 100%. That's a word. What uh, what I want to also touch on because bringing up overcoming was the fact that you had brain surgery too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You had a brain bleed. You wouldn't even think so, right? Yeah, right. No what, aneurysm <laughs> or no. I had I had a, I had a whole surgery. Yeah, my, my head was opened up, and when they had that, what did what, what, what did that what what did that come from? What did that precipitate? From? So it came from the fight. It came from the fight, my last mm-hmm. fight, where I fought a guy by the name of Cletus Selden. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, it's it's, it's a lot because we still got an ongoing case and things oh, like that. Oh, I so didn't know like, that. Yeah, you can't oh, really okay, okay. Top it up, but yeah, but okay. um, what was that? Something? Did you feel it, or did you? Nah, just you went didn't, down? nah, you feel it. Oh, okay. After the fight, okay. You know, I went to the hospital. The thing I, I, I was feeling queasy, and you know, okay. my mother was sitting next to me, and she know mm-hmm. I'm not no fan of no doctors. Never was no hospital caller. Never was none of that. Mm-hmm. I told her, I said, "Yo, take me to the hospital." She said, "What?" Mm-hmm. She was like, "Let's go." Get the car. The next thing I know, I was in the emergency room, and then after that, I sustained. I stayed in. I think 11 days after mm-hmm. I was in a. Wow. Yeah, I kind of went in a coma. Oh, and I was wow. in 11 days. So then, fast forward it. The fight was July 8th. Mm-hmm. I went through all that, them days, 11 days. Then I, I was released and went home. Uh, that was June 8th. Mm-hmm. July 8th, the following one, following one month, I'm downtown shopping. I get these sharp pains in my head, mm-hmm. sharp pains in my head. Luckily, I was downtown by my neuro. I got a neuro, a neuro doctor, Dr. Cohen. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I went to Dr. Cohen. I said, Dr. Cohen, I'm having you know bad headaches. Right? Could you just give me some pain pills? And let me get out of here, because I see you got a pack office. He was like, "You don't look too good like that." He said, "Let's go downstairs and take a CAT scan and see and see what's go, what's what's going on." So now these headaches was coming like contractions, hmm. but it would come and it was, and I was like, just hold my head, and, and then then it would just, it would just calm down and go away. Hmm. And maybe like twenty minutes later, it would come back again. So he he seen one of the contractions. And he was like, "Wait a minute, that don't." Let's go downstairs. Took the CAT scan. He seen what happened and. Forty-five minutes later, I was on a laying on his table, <clears throat> receiving brain surgery. Wow! No mother, no father, nobody, nobody there. Yeah, that's a blessing though that's that he blessing. he saw that. That's, yeah, it's a blessing that a hundred percent. Because you could have had another doc. And I had and, lost a, my grandmother to something that was very preventable, but no one saw it. Like no one, you know, there there wasn't a doctor there to be like, oh, that's this thing, and let's mm-hmm. take care. Very preventable thing that she had passed from. But like, and just that, think, yeah, this is why I love the Lord because. Just, I mean, I travel all around, always going. Everybody say he's always on a road. He's always somewhere. He's always gone. I happen to be in New York. Ha- and then not, not, not even that. I happen to be downtown yeah, that's, Brooklyn. That's crazy. Three blocks from my neuro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who gets that? Wow. Who is that? And he happened to see. And he happened to be there. You yeah. know, because this is a, he, he, he had different offices. He's, mm-hmm. all, he, he's all over. He was there. Mm-hmm. And I got a chance to go there. And he looked at me like, whoa, what the hell is going on with you? Mm. Let's get some, and you gotta have brain surgery right now. Zach. Damn, wow! When you came up out of that, what 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 were you? Did you feel like, damn, I got another shot at this? Did you did it? Cause sometimes things like that it make people have a whole mm, different perspective. Of nah, life. nah. <clears throat> when, right, I, be honest. When I first came out of it, it was like kind of took it for granted. Mm-hmm. Like man, brain surgery. Like so, so, what? The only real thing that freaked that freaked. That freaked me out, and I would tell people. So <laughs> when I woke up, I was in the ICU. Mm-hmm. I had all these tubes and stuff, all stuff all on me. I had a a a, 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 a drain bag. Mm-hmm. It was big, and it would catch the blood that dripping out of my head. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, "What the fuck?" Oh, yeah, yeah. it was hurting. I, I pulled it. Yeah. No mirrors inside of the the room that I'm in. I was like, "I can't see nothing." So I'm looking through the the. You know the regular glass where you look out the mm-hmm. thing, and I look and I happen to see my head. My head was like a boom. My, my head was like a pumpkin, boy. Wow. I said, <gasps> when I see my head, I said yeah. it can never go back. Wow. Like like this, I looked at myself like, oh, I'm done. It's over. I can never be Zab again. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh. And then, so as days started going on, progressing, it started going down, the yeah. drainage, swollen, yeah. swollen, swollen started going down, and then I started to formulate back. Mm-hmm. And that's when I just started like thanking God, like, oh my God, thank you, thank you, thank mm-hmm. you. But in that point, in that moment, right mm-hmm. then and there, it was no, it was really no feelings, bro. It was like right. I was numb. Yeah, I was numb. Yeah, I was you, numb to you everything. Still, do you even with that said and you being 
uh, retired. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a fighter's a fighter. You're going to die a fighter. Right. Do you still feel that, you know, that itch sometime where you feel like, man, I wish I was back in the ring. I want to do this some more. Um, Yeah, you always get that. As a fighter, you're always going to get that feeling and that mm -hmm. thought. But then when you think about the, the hard work and dedication mm -hmm. in the time that it takes to prepare yourself the correct way mm -hmm. to get back in the ring, you're like, no, nah, I don't miss that. Mm -hmm. I don't miss that. Yeah. That point, the sacrifice. Yeah. The 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 hard work, the 10 week training camps. Mm -hmm. the, the 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 eating right, the sleeping right, mm -hmm. the training, the hard, the running, the no sex, the no mm -hmm. everything, bro. That you no like, sex thing is is real. 100%. Oh man, I always If you don't, you'll be was... you'll be in the ring looking up going, what what happened? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Like, you know what I'm saying? I always like, thought yeah. that was a fairy tale. Nah, I didn't know that was nah, real. Nah, nah, okay. Nah. And, People have done it and got uh -huh. and, and got away with it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been people that slipped yeah. slip, slip through the crowd, mm -hmm. but it's 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 real. Mm. It's it's it's, it's yeah. real, bro. Okay. It's real. It's real, uh, man. So why you think after you you know after you you do this and you you know it, you know you ejaculate and everything like yeah. that, you go right to sleep. Yeah, yeah. That's the best <laughs> ambient. Try to get up and go. Try to get up and go do a fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You go to sleep. Well, then. see, I didn't figure. Well, yeah, that makes sense right before a fight, right. but I figured like during the training process. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you gotta leave that alone. Oh wow. You at least need about a good maybe a good good solid month. Wow. Good month, good month and a half. You gotta relax. Is that ever a struggle for you? No. Well, okay. It was never a struggle. I mean, once you see the opportunity is what drives you. Mm hmm You have great opportunities. I mean, I've been in big, great fights all my life. Mm hmm So when you have these great opportunities. Yeah. Are you leading up to a great opportunity? Yeah. When you know, like, I, right, I'm number five on the charts. Four more fights, I'm gonna be fighting for the championship of the world. You do everything right. Mm -hmm. You sacrifice yourself. You that sacrifice, discipline. You sacrifice your time. Yeah. You sacrifice your body. Yeah. You're like, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm doing everything correct because I want to be champion of the world. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know. um, well, let me land on this. So. With, I mean, you're super accomplished, right? You've done, you've pretty much done everything you set out to do, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, in the fight game, mm -hmm. right? And in that, you had to, like you said, you had to kind of be in, in tune with that primal, uh, uh, you know, animalistic instinct uh, to be good and at a high level for so long. Mm -hmm. um, now, at this juncture in your life, do you feel like, are you civilized? You feel like yeah. that killer instinct is you civilized. So the guy I am today, mm -hmm. the guy, the guy you see today, and the guy I used to be is that guy's he's gone. He's he's finished. I put him to sleep. He retired with the career. You know, he got that that guy got the Hall of Fame. He got all that. He got he's six time champ of the world. Mm -hmm. He did all that undisputed champ. Mm -hmm. But we put him to the side. These days now, I take care of my kids. I play golf. I got a different circle of friends. I live in California. Mm -hmm. I love to go to boxing fights. I love my wife. It's a whole different thing. When I was younger, I was I was different. Right. I was the I, everything I went with being a champion, mm -hmm. a boxer, a, pug, a a top guy in the limelight. I was that. Okay. I'm not that no more. A pugilist. That's the word. Yeah. Pugilist. Yeah. yeah. You taught me that. Yeah, yeah. Look it up when you get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I take your word for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He taught me pugilist. <laughs> when I think of pugilist, I always think of the old like UK mm -hmm. like boxers yeah. and stuff. Yeah, like that's that. fight top yeah. fighters. That's, yeah, that's yeah, a pugilist. Yeah, yeah. Like. Yeah. You a top fighter. Yeah. yeah. So now you know. Currently, I mean, you have the new album out or the new yeah. single with, new single with, with Johnny yeah. Volga. Shout yeah. out to the homie Johnny, Johnny Volga. Yeah, yeah. My, he been to brother. the show. Johnny been to the show with Edie. My brother. Yeah. Um. You got a new, you have a reality show? Yeah, we have a reality show coming out. Nice. It's gonna be fire. It's gonna nice. be fire. Nice. What uh what's the premise of it? What what what's what's going on in it? So it's about um we, we got a good cast of fighters. Mm -hmm. And uh the real highlight of it is the women behind the fighters. We wanna highlight what goes on with a boxer's wife. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, that hasn't been done. Yeah, nah, yeah. it hasn't been done yet. Yeah, so. But we got so, but we took a whole twist to it. I mean, can't really drop it yet because yeah, it ain't, yeah, yeah. ain't really coming out yeah. yet. You know how people steal content. Yeah, you know do. what I'm saying? They do. Yeah, people steal stuff. You got a network that's coming out on? We got all that. Okay. We got all that. Nice. So you know what I'm saying? All that. But, you know, it's just 
I mean, I, I, nobody could do what we do. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? The way I, the way I lined it. Ah, that's Ew. dope, though. That's Ew. a dope concept. Ew. Executive producer? Yes, I'm executive oh, okay. producer. Yes. Oh, congratulations, Thank bro. You. That's big. Myself and my wife, Vivi. Yes. Oh, nice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, what else you got? What else you got cracking? Um, I play a lot of golf. I play mm. a lot of golf. <laughs> Are you good at golf as well? You know what? I don't, I, if it makes sense, I don't know if there's a, a certain thing you can say. Somebody's good, like, uh, no, I put it no. Okay, no, it's just no. something you enjoy. Well, no, I'm working at it. I'm okay. working at it. I'm working at it. Steady. It's a, it's a, it's a solo sport. You just, right. Yeah. It's it's. I'm. I'm I better, just got into it this year. I I I'll say this. I'm better than I was yesterday. Nice, and that's, that's all that counts. Yeah. That's Better than I was yesterday. So this also is a hip hop platform. So I gotta ask you. We'll put you in a hot seat. Yeah. Who's your top five dead or alive rappers? Oh, that's very easy. Uh, Jay Z, Pop, Big, uh, Kane, Rakim, Fabulous, Jadakiss. Mm -hmm. No West Coast. No down south. Um. Yeah, I got yeah, but you you said five. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was about six. Five. He's from. He from yeah, Brooklyn. I gotta. No, I, I know. gotta go with the yeah, town. Yeah, yeah. You know what I gotta. <laughs> what you mean? I'm gonna be from Brooklyn and say, "Come on, somebody." They're gonna be like, "What you?" He's a Pac in there. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, but Pac's, you know, he's from the East Coast, and that's family. <sighs> yeah. Oh, one other thing I want to ask you. Um, I noticed, uh, BMF. Yeah. Yeah. Though, though, that's fam. What What are your your ties to BMF? It's the family. Mm -hmm. It's the family. Meech is a great person. Mm -hmm. Great person. Met him a long time ago. We kicked it. It's the homie always been, you know, solid with me. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I was like one of his first sports athletes. Mm -hmm. And doing it. We oh, you work with Meech? Yeah. And, oh, yeah. I didn't know Meech worked in boxing as well. Well, me. Mm -hmm. work, he worked with me. He worked with you? Yeah. Oh, okay, nice. <laughs> I didn't know me. he had his hand in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This oh. is Detroit Meech or Atlanta Meech or? This is Meech. Okay. Yeah, on <laughs> Meech. I, mm -hmm. I don't I don't know which level. It's Meech. He's, he was a great guy. He was, he was dope. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. You like the you you watch the show? Oh yeah, BMF. Yeah, yeah. BMF is dope. I mean, who mm -hmm. don't watch it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who don't watch it? Yeah. You ever had any ties with Fifty? Yeah, Fifty, yeah. my guy. Yeah, that's my guy. Yeah, Fifty. I've been known. I've been known. I've been known Fifty since Boo Boo. Yeah, since you know Boo Boo. What I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I and love what 50 has done, bro. Just yeah. How he's just grown. I love how he's grown and elevated. Yes. How he's yes. elevated and came from, Absolutely. you know, the hardcore rapper now to exec businessman. He's a mogul. You know what I'm saying? Point, I mean, yeah. that. I, I think that you, when you know him or know of him mm -hmm. from, from from that timeline, mm -hmm. and you hear stories about him and, and to see where he's at now, it's like dope. It's fantastic. Yeah. And that shows you growth. Absolutely. So that goes to show That's you that anybody can change. That's right. It's about if you want to change. Mm -hmm. See, change is in people, that I always say. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's in the person. It's about if you want to change. If you want to get out of that, stop that, not then you can do that. Yeah. But if you still want to be the knucklehead, you ain't, you 40 years old, but you want to act like you 20 and still doing the same dumb thing, mm -hmm. then, then, then you're going to get what the 20 year old boys get. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah. don't be mad when those consequences and repercussions come back around and you, well, what? Because that's what you choose. <laughs> right. What right. you choose, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we don't, you know, you know, anybody that that's mm. at that that's that that's came from the heights of the 50s, the Zabs, the Tysons, and 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 and, and you know, people knew of our younger era and our younger histories. Mm -hmm. And to still be and us be 40s and 50s and still be still be doing that. Mm -hmm. No, bro, that's, that's right, that's crazy. It's backwards. It is. Very much so. Life is about growth. That's right. Life is about elevation. Mm -hmm. Life is about going to the next level. Yep. So to be stagnated and stuck, something's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You live life long <laughs> enough. It you you stagnated and stuck. I mean, the elevator cut off on you. And you just, <laughs> you're stuck. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. you got to get yeah. some emergency help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's real talk. Yeah. I love your little slang, your little slang, slanguations. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, it's real. It's, I mean, it's, it's yeah. real Are we going to see a Zab uh, documentary, a Zab movie? 100%. Okay. 100%. 100%. We, we, everything is in the, everything is in the works, man. Okay. Everything is in the works, man. Like, like, like I said, man. I love who I became. Mm -hmm. I love where I'm at in life now. I love the Lord for just keeping me here and putting me in this position. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just vowed that, you know, I'm not going to do anything different. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go right. I'm, I'm not going to go left. I'm going to stay right. Yeah. You're not going to deviate off the, the, the you path. You can't, you know what I'm saying? I mean, like when you, when you go do certain mm-hmm. things and you, and you talk to the Lord and you ask for his help, mm-hmm. you also got to give him something too. You got to also, he going to, well, what you going to do? Right. I'm going to stop this, stop that, put this down, da, 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 and you got to really honor that. Mm-hmm. You got to really honor your word because you can't play with him. He ain't like talking to the dude at the front desk like, yeah, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm do it. And yeah. <laughs> you know, no, you That's can't. Right. You can't do that. Yeah. Now with, now with the big guy, you got to uphold your word because he sees you at all times. Yeah. There's no room or dark place you could go to that he don't see you. Yeah. And I, and, and, and I always keep this in the back of my mind. I'm like, you can fool anybody, but you can't. You can never, ever, ever fool him. And him... Breaking his rules is worse than breaking any any law, or any 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 anybody rule that you could break. You know what I'm saying? Up, up, uphold. So yeah, 100%. That's a hundred percent. That's a word, champ. On that note, <laughs> that's a that's a message right there. Hundred percent. Yeah. Man, well, we appreciate you coming through, champ. Man, Thanks when for you give me, me your man. flowers, bro, I've been wanting to do this for a minute. You know, uh, I'm a fan of you. I've been watching you, you know, since the '90s, and I even still follow you on social media. And yeah. You know, I I like the way you carry it. So we just Thank wanted you. to give you your flowers, brother. I appreciate you. you coming, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah incredible career. Yeah, incredible, incredible career. Incredible and career. and Thank even you. more so, like I said, the man that you've become today. You know, and let the people reflect. He showed up with his twin boys and his wife. You know, yeah. So you oh, got yeah. a beautiful family yeah. as well. I told you, yeah. I still keep a gang with me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's my new gang. That's your, yeah. new, that's your new resource. That's my new resources. New that's resource. right. That's my new resources. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Definite. Yeah. yeah. So and we, Uncle Phil came with me too. You know Uncle what I'm saying? Phil, shout out to Uncle, Uncle Phil. Shout out to Uncle Phil came with me. Yes, sir. You know, I don't, you know, it's, yeah. like I said, with growth and elevation comes different things, bro. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just, you know, you look at that, you look at that young Zab, and, you know, I've been on the scene, bro, from, a, from young, bro. I was able to walk with, Top guys at young age, 16 years old, were pretty over the He was a multi millionaire, top mm-hmm. pound for pound, best fighter in the world. Mm-hmm. Boxing high level. I was traveling the world with Mike Tyson, you know what I'm saying? 18, 19 years old, bro. You know what I'm saying? 20 years old. We going to different countries and I'm we pulling up in a country in a jet and I'm looking out the window going, Yo, did the whole country come to the airport? Yeah. Like it looked like half right. of the country came to greet us at the airport. Wow. You know, hundred thousand fans, bro. It's everywhere you walk. You know how UK is, it's different, bro. They mm-hmm. pitch it. Yep. Everywhere you go, it's like, it's, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, Scotland, Ireland, we was in Ireland. We fought together. I was the co-main event when he fought in Sava Reese. Mm-hmm. I was right there. I was, it was, we in foreign countries and it's crazy, bro. Mm-hmm. So to experience that type of stuff now and for God to have you walk with that and show you that and walk with that and you still choose. BS? Nonsense. Come on, yeah. bro. Right. He's, he's a fool. Oh, That's a word. <laughs> That's a yeah. word. I'm gonna let you get out of here, champ. Man, appreciate you coming. Thank you. You know, uh, man, that's producer Ken, Big Court, Holding Court Podcast, sure. the man, the champ. Zach I know you got Judah. a question, Ken. Go ahead. Go ahead. See, you had a question. Hold it. Ken. Hold it. Hold it. it was the Mike Tyson. I said, I know there's a good Tyson story somewhere. Oh, go there. ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we ain't. That, that was, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm, go I'm ahead. a Tyson yeah. fan. Me yeah. too. I love it's Mike not Tyson. It's not yeah. I love Tyson. I have a painting of you Mike know what? Tyson. I'm 40. I'm 41, so I grew up watching Tyson. Yeah, me and my dad just pay per view and your fights. Right. I mean, because you know, 2001, I was just right out of high school watching, watching them fights right. and everything. Right. So Tyson, I mean, just that energy. There's got to be a good story there. That- what I always tell people is this: this is one of the, the realest <laughs> things I can say about Mike. I got tons of stories, tons of experiences. Mike Tyson is probably one of the most intelligent people that I've met in life. Mm-hmm. No joke. Yeah. Yep. His 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 train of thought and the way he articulates mm-hmm. the message to you, man, it's brilliant. Yep. Like Mike had this in his in his house in Vegas, he got this big wall of books. Like 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 this big uh, library. Look like, like it's cool, fancy looking. You like, oh that's dope. You know what he tell you? Pick a book, I tell you about it. Any book up there, you like, you read all them books? He like every one. Wow. Super intelligent, bro. Yep. Super, like, like, like this. Our, our, our sit downs and talks is always, always memorable. Or, well, one thing he'll tell you, about, oh, Zab, oh, Zab, 
They have asking me questions. They have always asking me questions. He always, <laughs> yeah. he always, he always asking something. He always want to know something. Yeah. Because you know, I always feel like when you're around people like this, you know, people like the Jay Princes, mm -hmm. the Mike Tyson's. You know, what I'm saying the Pernell Whitakers. You know, what I'm saying rest in peace, on um, um, Pernell. Yep. You know, um, you want to get this knowledge, bro. These mm -hmm. guys walk in the yeah. footsteps in, in in different lands that I, I probably won't ever get to walk. Mm -hmm. So I want to know about these experiences. I want to know. Like you'd be surprised how much of somebody else's story that you can fit in your life and go, "Wow, that just changed me." Mm -hmm. Hearing somebody yeah. else's experience yeah. can yep. change you. Yeah, because you can be like, "Wow," because they know the information behind that door that you never walked through before. That's right. And you might be like, "Yo, I gotta get through that door. I gotta get that." And they tell you, "No, no, no, you don't." Mm -hmm. Behind that door is this, is that, is yep. this, and that. You like that's the what? That's the responsible part and. And the and the beautiful part about the technology, because technology is not always beautiful. Right. But if you do this responsibly, like people sharing their stories, it's because mm -hmm. we've sat here. It's like our sixtieth. Mm -hmm. You know, we got you just hit a hundred thousand subs, six, so, sixty plus interviews, and you sit interview after interview and just listen to these stories. Yeah. Whether it's Ice T or Jay Prince or you or Tiffany Haddish or yep. whoever, and you just go like, oh, that's crazy. You know, like mm -hmm. Tiffany was like homeless, and then. Working yeah. at a shelter, and then mm -hmm. you know to see people's journey, it's crazy. It's inspiring, it, it is. It's inspiring. It really is. Inspiring, bro. Really you hear people's story like that, yeah. and it, yours as well. Yeah, yeah. bro. You people mean, to follow. That's, you, that's why you know? I ask so such introspective questions. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times people want to know how. You know, they want to know the how because everybody goes through their struggles. Everybody has it? all of that, but they want to know the how. Yeah. What did you get? You know, and people take from that. You know, I know I do. I love, you know, listening to people's journey. Like I do right. this because I love it. I enjoy it. Right. You know, I don't, you see my phone, but I don't, everything I'm asking you is literally in the conversation. Your brain. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's just, you know, From things you've seen and heard of. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that's dope. I mean, and Michael always told me, you know, saying there is no wrong answer. The only, the only dumb answer you got is the one you don't ask. That's right. That's the dumbest thing you did. That is true. You didn't act like, damn, because you know how you know how when somebody leave you like, damn, I meant to, I meant to ask him about. I, yeah, that was your, that was <laughs> right. that was your fault. You know yeah, what I'm exactly. saying? That was your exactly. fault. So you know, mm -hmm. I would tell people, be inquisitive. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like when I like like even my my children, I, I you know I watch them grow up and they're very inquisitive. They're very they ask a lot of questions. I never get mad at that. Mm -hmm. I, I thank God for that. That's right. I thank yeah. God that their kids like that mm -hmm. because you know you can have a kid to sit in the room to be a mute. Yep. <laughs> just look uh, at yeah, you. Yeah. You like, mm -hmm. like I want to share stuff yeah, with you. I want to tell you. You know something. what I'm saying? I got like, two boys that just talk to me all day. I love it. That's the dumbest yeah. thing ever. Ten man. and eight, and they just the, dad, 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 yeah. dad, dad. I'm like, yeah. man, it's dope. They're yeah. thirsty for that, yeah. that information. I got, a, I got, I got a 15 year old little zap. He's oh man, he's he's like a he's he's a borderline brilliant genius right now. Computers, mm -hmm. life. Want to know about boxing? Ask about my career. I got four four daughters, four beautiful daughters. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? My daughters are older now. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? My oldest is, she's 30 years old. You know what I'm saying? The youngest is 20, 20, 20 21. Misia, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Misia. You got grandkids yet? Yeah, I got a granddaughter. Oh, oh nice. My God. That's Congratulations. My that's my heart. Congratulations. That's, that's my baby. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Riley. That, yeah. That's that's yeah. that's my baby. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And my daughter Zabrea, mm -hmm. and my daughter Destiny, and then Misia and Brandy. Nice. And, and Riley, you know what I'm saying? Congratulations. And, my, and mom Dukes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I got sisters. Yeah, and you know life is that's, life is good these beautiful. days, man. That's life beautiful. is good these days. But like I always tell people, and I want and I want people to remember this: life is what you create. I know it sounds crazy. Never look at your situation and think that that's the end. I was a Brooklyn project kid, free lunch, welfare, all that. But I always had a. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know what it, I didn't know what it was gonna be. Like people ask me all the time, "Did you know you're gonna be a boxer?" No, I didn't even know what I was gonna do. I just know I got to do something yep. to elevate up out of this situation. And boxing was the outlet for yep. me because my father did it and the people that I liked and idolized did that. And I seen their lifestyle. And I was like, that's what I want. That's mm -hmm. what I want. So I dedicated my life towards that. Mm -hmm. How did you know you want to be a boxer? I, I never knew. I never had an opportunity at doing nothing else. Right. I just kept excelling from one level to the next, to the next, to the next, <laughs> to the next, yeah. to the next. Mm -hmm. And God got me to where I'm at today. I, so everybody out there, never give up on your dreams. I don't never think life is over. When you're having the biggest, hardest times, talk to him. He hear you. Hey, and that's a word from Zab Judah, the champ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
Thank well, you for that's it. Thank you appreciate for coming. We appreciate you, you my brother. God sure. bless you. God bless you too. Yes, sir. Yeah.